Just one. Just one, please. <laughs> Let's get that jingle. Now. Wild times. And we are back. It's nice. the Wild Times, episode number 68. We are in our beautiful studio. Uh, that is thanks to the Patreons, who are subscribers. They have allowed us to have this beautiful place. It's also thanks to the end of COVID. Hey, I lived hey. in a frat. I lived in the basement. It looked just like this. The walls were black. Very I feel dark. right at home. I'm don't, dark. don't neglect the people that are just clicking ads, man. People are just clicking ads on the podcast videos. We're getting money for that for the studio, too. I don't even know what that means, but that's good. Yeah. Ad click. Um, ad so revenue. you said ad. I thought you said clicking ads. I have a bad Chicago accent. We are here. Accent. This is episode number 68. <laughs> if you're joining us for the first time, this is the Wild Times podcast, a podcast where me, Forrest Galante, the broologist, and two very good buddies who I will yeah. introduce momentarily, talk about wildlife, animals, adventure, what's in the news, stories. We're highly opinionated, relatively undereducated, and overall have a really good time. <laughs> sure. We have yeah. two bachelor degrees between the three of us. Right. Relatively <laughs> undereducated. You could probably guess who the other one. <laughs> I have um, a master's degree. Joining me tonight, speaking of education, <laughs> is the one and only... The professor of podcasts, the professor, Mr. Ratep. How are you, Ratep? Professor, professor. Uh, I have a full bachelor's degree in podcasting, you son of a bitch. All right, pig trash. I'm relax. a little bit tipsy. I've decided I'm wearing this shirt for all of the rest of the podcasts. Go to my website, pigtrash.com. There's Shut nothing up. there. No There's nothing there. Plugging. <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't exist. It's, it's, no call it's just action. a suspended yeah. page. Yep, that doesn't work. All right, wow. Well, he's cut off for the rest of the show. Yeah, he's fine. Joining me on the <laughs> other end, the, uh, the long-haired, the lovely, the producer, Mr. Patrick DeLuca. What's up, Pat? Hey. <laughs> that whole camera For all thing. those people who <laughs> yeah, aren't watching. Something. I'm good, bro. I'm good. excited to be here in Santa Barbara. We're going to go back to your house. Yep. Make some pizzas in the pizza oven and drink a whole bunch of drinks. It's going to be a treat. What a wonderful night it's going to be. What a wonderful it's be. But before we do that, we're going to do a great podcast that Let's everybody's going to really enjoy. Right um, and you know what? I thought tonight... Mine have been stacking up. It was Shark Week recently. People yep. are reaching out. Yep. Things are popping off. I got Brosner DMs up the wazoo. Wazoo! Well, thankfully, they're all super fucking interesting, so let's hear them. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Here we go. Are. Here we go. My first one, <laughs> Colton M. Dalton says, and I haven't clicked this yet, so I'm pretty curious to see what's going on here. Well, I just clicked it. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> oh, for those who are confused about the new layout, we moved our monitor over here. Right. So that Forrest, who we all know you're mostly here to see him, doesn't have to turn around. We've... Replaced our monitor with a lovely red velvet thing. But when we look over here, we're looking at our monitor. That's right. And you. We're not staring yeah, you see all our the faces. cameras. And yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah just comment. Right. What do you got? What is Colton M. Dalton doing? Colton M. Dalton says, think we need some explanation for this one, boys. All right. That's it. Switch. And, and he put a link. Switch. <laughs> so if you Google Forrest Galante's book in uh, shop. Have your Lo cum. Lovely image of me and my book for sale directly next door to it. Have your cum and eat it, too. Um, explanation. Uh, Patrick? Okay, so here's the thing. I This is... I have no fucking clue what a book about have your cum and eat it, too. Mm -hmm. My guess is it's going to be somehow related to the evolution of male reproductive behavior. That's my only guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do we know? Do we know well, what the I mean, thing is? I've never seen this before one second I know ago in is. my life. What is what it? Is it? Well, first of it all, I've read the book three times. I believe that. Second of all, uh, Will and I, upon hearing about the launch of your book, have been SEOing this specifically so that it would show mm. up in the results that adds up. next to your book for the past at okay. least You know what's three interesting to, to me, though? Real <laughs> quick. You know what's interesting to me? You believe it. No, no. Listen. Patrick's looking up. Have your come and eat it too, but he's searching it on Brazzers for some reason and not on Google. Well, I was so. assuming it was a lovely film. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a fictional book. Okay. Uh, set in 1981, two Mormon missionaries uh, are assigned to work together as companions in Napoli and they have a gay romance. Here's an interesting thing, though. It made so me think of this. Brokeback Mountains 
for Mormons. Brokeback Mountain for Bro- Mormons. Brokeback Mormons. Written in January of 2020. Why does it come up under your name? Couldn't tell you. I don't know. Somebody did this on purpose. I'm guessing it's the thylacine awareness group. Of <laughs> it has yeah. to be. It must be. It has to be. This it's does their not happen. Rebuttal. <laughs> I, I've been doing SEO for years. This does not fucking happen. I <laughs> swear to it God. Adds up. Have your come and eat it too. It's too perfect. It's pretty funny. Somebody um, did this. What were you going to say, Patrick? It's such a fucking left turn but th- so back in like medieval Europe yeah when uh, if, like someone committed a murder and was sentenced to death they would make a, a book they would basically make the person write a confession okay and then they would bind the book in the human skin that's Ugh. called a skin book Ugh. and then would give it to the survivors of the murdered person so there are actually like these old skin books. Obviously, I'm sure they're super degraded by now. I don't like the sound of any of that. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. Terrible. Yeah, okay. It's, it's very. Oh, real quick. Let me let me jump in here because I've got this <laughs> one DM. How do you jump? Oh, I see. I see. I thought you were going to jump in on your own comment. I'm like, you're already talking. Well, I could see Forrest opening his mouth. I was starting to like. He was getting. Ex- he was getting excited. Okay, right. sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go. Dalton Voss. Yep. Dalton Voss. sent me a picture. Now he lives in Florida. Okay, okay, Forrest. Familiar he sent it, it to me. Yep. He was walking on the beach. He okay. personally found this animal, and he was like, "What y'all think?" I was like, "I don't think anything." <laughs> right. Let me see what Forrest. Literally thinks. not capable of thought. Oh boy, what a mess! I know what that is. <laughs> um, it is a mess. Yeah, it is a mess. What is it? It's very confusing. I know what it is. So before I explain it, why don't you guys take a stab at it? What are we looking at here? Well, I uh, P- Pat sent it to me to bring up on the show, and yep. I said. Oh, thanks. A dead picture of a bir- uh, a picture of a dead bird, and he goes, "Nope." And then I just well, labeled it not. "picture of not dead bird." Well, you're right about that part. It's clearly not a bird. You you are a bird brain. What is? Uh, I see. A is beak. it a flounder or a fluke of some sort? I have no idea. Another very good guess. So what you're looking at, and I'm not sure the exact species. I was trying to figure it out quickly. It is a frogfish. Some kind of a frogfish. So I've never heard of that. Go ahead and pull up frogfish, Peter, Whoa. please, and put in the images. Peter. And you, Peter, and you'll <laughs> see these fish that walk, um, and they have these weird appendages. <laughs> and so it's one of these species. Like one of these species. Species. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can. Atenarius. Logged. So, so would that be in the. That's something that would live in the Atlantic or the, the Gulf of Mexico? Correct. That is an oceanic fish. So see the little. Appendages that oh, look yeah, like yeah, fins, yeah. Yeah, yeah, where Peter's pointing, exactly. Okay. So those are an adapted um, pelvic fin that they have changed that has literally migrated over millennia down their body to actually act as little legs. And they will Got use it. those to walk along the sand That's instead of swim thing. and use their tail to swim. So they kind of perch up, yeah. kick off, swim with their tail, land, walk a little. It's like a four-month-old baby. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a mess. It's like... Um, <laughs> You know, yeah, it's, it's like an evolutionary missing link in a way. It's like a, between a fish and an amphibian. It's like give that thing another, you know, 10 million years and it's crawling out of the ocean totally. and walking around. Yeah. Okay. Good find, Dalton Voss. Yeah, very I nice. still think very it's nice. a bird. Whatever. It is. You're right. Thank you. Um, that's good. I like that. So I haven't opened this one yet because I just find them fun to look at for the first time on the show. Okay. Rate rep. I don't know if this is a it's play on, on you. Name. Yeah, I'm it's not. It's got to be. Yeah. Just says, no fucking thanks and sent a link. Okay. Let's well, take a look. Let's take a look now. Oh boy. Oh, boy. oh I've been in this sitch. So I for know those what's only happening here. listening, there's a guy in a very large tent. Oh, <gasps> no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Big male lion oh, my comes cruising God, right up. Set of balls. Is looking at the guy through his tent, poking at the tent with his paw. Um, this is, and by the way, if you're listening to oh, this. Oh, shit. He grabs it with his claw and he's oh, dragging his claw the tent. stuck in the tent. Yeah. Oh, this Look, guy's in a bad spot. If you're listening to this, here's what's going on. This, there's a video on the YouTube. <laughs> We're showing you this right now. This is happening in Southern Africa. I can almost guarantee it. They're in a tent. There is a big male African lion, quite malnourished. See how skinny he is? See how his hip yeah, bones are sticking dude. out? He's and hungry. that's a dangerous situation because the hungrier they oh, are, wow. the more likely they are to you know act like erratically like this. This guy is in his tent. Oh, my God. Literally, the only thing between him and a very hungry lion is a mesh door. It's a video worth seeing. It's quite something. Look at Holy those nads. Christ. What do you think he's doing? Yeah, I mean, is he flailing about in there, like trying to scare it away? I mean, he must be, right? Or that What's would be the guy what, doing? That would be what you would do. You would, you try would make, make noise, noise and be aggressive. Yeah. And I know that seems very odd, but 
I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he's hiding, cowering in the corner or what he's doing because you don't see inside yeah, the tent. he's probably fucking, he, he probably just made diarrhea. Well, you yeah. see him at the end right. there. He runs out of the tent too. Yeah, I'm sure that's long video. after the lion left. But fucking crazy. What do you do? You run at the door of the tent and make noise and be really aggressive and try and make it stand down. Because a predator like that's not used to that. He's right. got cargo shorts on. Yeah. Well, it's crazy though that, you know, the guy's alive. Yeah. The guy lived to post the video. Yep. Yeah. So that thin ass piece of mesh was enough to, because you're right, it was a skinny lion. Like right. That lion might have thought, this is a pretty interesting snack here. It's an easy meal, wrapped yeah. in a nice little wrapper, you know, just <laughs> yeah. sitting in the middle of the woods, not going anywhere. A very um, skinny. It's like a delicious little burrito. Well, what a nightmare. I only Taco got Bell. one more good Brosner DM that I wanted to dig into. There are there are many others, but one more that's fun. Okay. Um, okay. It came from at the chicken finger bandit. <laughs> <laughs> He says, how is this the most high-tech way to restock lakes? Seems like a cartoon solution. And the reason that I like this one is because Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I've been involved in projects where they deal with it. And what you're seeing, again, if you're only listening, is you are seeing hundreds of thousands of fingerling trout, fingerling being a very young trout the size of your pinky finger, being dropped uh, as a payload out of the air from an airplane as they fly over alpine lakes to stock them. Uh, In this case, in Utah. So those are all fish. (laughs) Right. They're taking them up into these high mountain lakes, and they're dropping them out of the plane into the lakes, and the fish typically almost all survive and uh, and restock the lakes that way. Well, so his question is, haven't we, isn't there a better way uh, with technology to restock lakes? I figure this is definitely the most economical way to do it. Are you kidding me? This is awesome, man. This is cutting-edge technology. Like, these are lakes that don't have road access. Okay. You know, you can't just be, drive a big truck right. up there. Right. You know, what are you going to do, a drone? That's one trout at a time. You sure. know, here we are <laughs> using uh, crop dusting airplanes, right. filling them up with specialized tanks that are pesticide free, filled with water in these young trout, and having pilots so accurate that they can fly over the lakes and drop them all right in the water. Not to I mention, think it's amazing. Not to mention, yeah, I mean, it's a heavy ass payload because you yep. got to have the, the, the trout have to be in water. Right. So you're carrying a heavy payload. And also, how soon we forget. How soon we fucking take for granted the technology that's not brand new. Right. Right. An right. airplane is the craziest <laughs> technology that's ever been existed. I agree. It's ever you. been invented. I agree right. with you. We get in missiles right. and go real fast. Yeah. We can get to Australia by brunch tomorrow. Correct. Right. It's nuts. Correct. So it's pretty high tech, is what you're saying. I'm yes, saying even absolutely. though that plane was from the fifties, that is some high tech <laughs> shit. No, I'm I'm with Patrick on this one. I think it's a great method. By the way, there are multiple reasons they're doing this kind of thing with restocking lakes. Sometimes it's just for sportsmen and fishermen. Sometimes sure. there are population collapses. Sometimes these lakes freeze over, so on and so forth. But I love it. I, I think, you know, I think it's great. It I think certainly that's, looks fucking cool. It's super awesome. cool. It's cool. That's shot. technology on the forefront, keeping wildlife around. I think it's awesome. Well, Mister Still Alive. By the way, I did start reading the book. Enjoying it? I skipped right to the part where I'm in it. Okay. That um, makes sense. But You're I will, in like at least two thirds of it. Yeah, I skipped through the Zimbabwe. I, it's Smart. It's That's good. So it's well written. It's funny. Um, you're an asshole for saying that I said let's do brunch because I think you, you suggested <laughs> the brunch, but it's your book. Uh, <laughs> uh, One of anyway. us said let's do brunch. No, it's it's yeah. lo- it's actually and we really did good. Brunch. Let's be clear. We absolutely did <laughs> in brunch. typical LA douche fashion. Right. That is that's, how I described that's what him he in the said. Book. Yeah. Perfect. In <laughs> typical <laughs> Hollywood douchey fashion. Let's he said, do let's lunch. Do, yeah, I said let's do brunch. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> let's do brunch. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's good, and I good, like that you. the writing's big, man. If it makes for me, if I open a book and it's tiny print. I'm not reading it. Was yeah, that your choice, off. or was that your editor, or it was who's just like, we got to make it big for Patrick, or well, else? Well, no, it was read the it. only way I could read it. <laughs> I'd have a lot of pictures. Um, no, so it's like it's, two thousand pages with just like four words yeah, on no, each. It's, it's a nice format. I, that's yeah. done it's good. No, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. I was like, yeah, perfect. Good. So anyway, wonder when I'm going to get my copy. Uh, mine's like, signed. There's one like right there. And I, I, I know. It's like, you know, you just handed dude, one to Pat. Still said, Sorry, alive. it took me so long. We make a show called Extinct or Alive. I'm kidding, or used by the way. To. May do it again soon. Dominic Haynes, classic Brosner, sent yeah, pro. this great article about a rabbit that is known as the Magic Rabbit. Okay. Right? Magic Rabbit. Super endangered. In fact, has only really been was only discovered in 1983. It's I've never just, heard of just it. Just says in the mountains north. I'll pull up a couple pictures I here. Feel like when you Google Look Magic at this Rabbit, 
<gasps> oh, uh, this is um, I know what this. This is there's uh, another name for these guys. It's sure. not just Magic Rabbit. Um, it looks magic. Yeah, first discovered in 1983 by uh, Lee Widong. And Recent these, discovery. Not seen again. It hasn't been seen in 20 years. So it was discovered oh, wow. in 83. Okay. It was obviously seen subsequently. And then uh, uh, this is the first time it's been seen in 20 years. God damn, that thing's cute. They're adorable. Very I'm trying cute. to remember the, the proper name of them. It's not Magic Rabbit's like a, sure. a term. Found uh, it. it says in the Pika. Mount- it's a Pika. Pika? Yeah. Okay. Um, was, yes, this is cool. Spotted for the first time in 20 years. That's awesome. I mean, they're, they're crazy, like stupid cute. That's, it is. Truly one of the cutest animals on the planet. It looks like a Furby. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a Furby. Yeah, Look at the eyes. I mean, the eyes are just fucking so puppy dog. They live way up in the mountains northwest of China. I love it. Which I don't really know what that means, but maybe that's uh, Mongolia Uh, or something. I think it's adorable. I mean, look, anytime there's a rediscovery, it's the best, right? It's like... The thing about rediscovery versus new species discovery is like we found it, we gave up hope for it, you know, we don't think we think it's gone, right? And then bam, here it is hanging on, you know, figuring itself out, which is just great. I mean, I, I love that. It's also just living up in the mountains being cute as shit, you know, like this thing's life is awesome. It doesn't even need us to know about it. No. It's like, you don't need to know about me. No. Look at me. I'm just busy up here looking in vernal pools from my own reflection <laughs> right. and ad- admiring how cute I am. I can bang anything I want. So this, <laughs> you just mentioned the looking at your reflection in the water. Okay. okay. So uh, something's been brought to my attention because I have a bunch of friends who have babies. Okay. Okay. And everyone's like, yeah, the babies look like the dad and it's an evolutionary thing. Right. So, so that the, the dad, dad doesn't knows, abandon it. I've heard this. That it's, uh-huh. Theirs. Uh-huh. Okay. Versus the mom who shat it out. Right. Right. Sure. Because that's the like, technical term. Yeah. I dur- believe during so. the time where humans were evolving, females were very promiscuous. They'd have sex with a lot of different males so that more males would care for the offspring. And the idea is that, <laughs> you know, if it looks like the dead. But is here's that how my it thought fucking mirrors didn't exist. So uh, is it, sa- you know, because I'm like, I know oh, what I look like because I see a mirror every day. That's a good point. But this theory seems crazy to me unless we're literally assuming that every. Every cave person slash whatever, you know, we we evolved from looked at their reflection in water. That's they a good, did. I never thought of I, that, I mean, though. they had to have been fascinated by the reflection, man. I mean, it must have but been... But did they know it was them, they or seeked. did they think it was like a mysterious water ghost? They're not, they're not <laughs> dogs. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's, that is interesting, though, because I'm very familiar with the whole evolutional concept of the baby looks like the dad, so the dad doesn't abandon right. it, blah, blah, blah. Um but, like you said, we didn't have mirrors until, what, a couple hundred years ago? No, and, like, you know, yeah, obviously some people lived by stagnant water and used it to probably wash stuff or, you know, bathe if they did that, maybe to drink. But uh, I would assume a lot of, you know, early primates lived by rivers, and that was their freshwater source, yeah, but which you, you can't you, really see your reflection You still in. don't know what you lo- I mean, right. I go to the Amazon or go to Africa. I don't know. I don't look in a mirror for three weeks. Right. I don't know what I look like. I mean, there's water around, but it's muddy water. It's turbulent or, you know, there's exactly. no. Yeah, I was just like, wait a minute. Like this theory, everyone says it as if it's definitely true, but we didn't. I don't know that we knew what we looked like. Maybe you knew who your brothers were and your, you know, or you knew who your dad was or your mom. But like, that's a real mind tickler. It's because a little bit of a fuck. It is because it's like, <laughs> you. it's really interesting because how do you know? I mean, even just taking the baby thing out of it. How, without mirrors, right. how do you know what you look like? Y- you do, you fucking don't. I mean, you, you definitely go. think you look different than you actually do when you look in a mirror. That's for sure. In your own head, totally. You're like, I, you know, I, I look this one way, and then you see yourself, and you're like, oh, that's, you're yeah, like, that's I'm a what train I train look like. That's what I look like. Yeah, that's not pretty as good as I thought up here. Pretty yeah. brutal. Yeah. But, but my point is, like, we live in a society now where... You look at yourself every day, right? You get up in the morning, brush your teeth in front Such of the mirror. Such a big part of your identity is right. what you look like. Right. And yeah. we're all, you know, we're all fucking uploading selfie TikToks all day long and staring at ourselves. <laughs> and, you know, it's yeah. like we know what we look like. But right. until very recently, even if you had access to that vernal pool to go and look at yourself, you weren't going over there six times a day to check your hair. Of course not. Do you know what I mean? Like I, that was of course nonsense. Not. I think if you saw yourself even once though back then, you would you it would stick in your head forever. Not I disagree. Like now. You I don't disagree. think so? No. I, if I you knew forget, it was I yourself. I forget what I look like. I know, but I swear it, to God. But it's just it's like you just said, we're constantly looking at ourselves. We've seen ourselves a thousand times. If you only saw yourself once, you would be like 
whoa, and it would like be a burned memory because it's not it's, really how memory works, though. To be honest, when you have like an awe striking moment, well, you you my, his, no. I think Patrick's point is you change it, right? You of change course. your perception. Mem- of something memories over time. change. Literally, memories change. The way that you remember an event, so your picture of an event that happened when you were eight, right? right. Whatever right. it was, you know, who the fuck knows? Your grandparents' house, whatever, mm-hmm. is completely different than you remembered it <laughs> 10 years ago. Right. Your, but you would think, no, I know. I was there. It right. smelled like this. It looked like this. Right. Yeah. It's literally not how it works. They've done studies yep. where they studied twins, right? Sure. And they would say, describe... So what happened? Okay, the day that your grandfather died on Christmas. Right. Tell me what happened that day. Right. And they will, and they'll separate them. Right. And one's like, I remember vividly. We were eating French toast. My mom came down in pajamas. Right. Right. And I could tell that something was wrong, but she waited till after we opened the presents. And then the other twin will be like, remember it was like, like it was yesterday. My mom made us eggs. Yeah. And she came right to, in, and she was already dressed. And I thought, you know, and they're, they're completely fucking different. Correct. One's sure. right, one's wrong. Right. But they they work, or, or they mu- they might both be wrong because they both turned it into their They're own. They're most version. likely both. Yeah, wrong. I mean, I think it's a little bit different with a human faces because for some reason it's so important in our society and people remember faces when uh, you see them up close. I, can I argue with? Can I debate that with you for a second? No, you okay. cannot. Of Please. course you Let's can. Move on. Wait, Forrest, <laughs> of course you can. I will take your knife and slit my wrist up. not in the vein part but okay. i'll give myself a little cut the other if way. you don't argue with him got it got it okay <laughs> then i'll so definitely not gonna argue let's move okay. on um <laughs> i'll tell you why i don't believe that mm-hmm. in my mind my mother looks the same as she has my whole life okay uh, tell me that i'm wrong tell me to you you're you don't envision fascinating. my she Holy doesn't. shit. Do you know what I mean? That's such a good point. Put a picture of your mom in your mind right now. Well, and it's also never when I look at pictures of my mom from when I was like eight. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, my mom used to be young. Right. But yeah, you're right. But in your and mind. Every memory, your mom is just who she is there's, now. There's a photograph huh. in your mind of right. your mom forever. That's cool. I, I'm pretty sure my granddad, who passed away like 10 years ago, my grandmother was runner-up Miss South Africa, so she was very, very beautiful and very vain and crazy and racist like all old white ladies. But um, okay. she, I'm to this day, I'm 100% convinced that when my grandfather looked at my grandmother, he only saw Miss South Africa, just runner-up Miss right. South Africa, right. his whole life, until right. they were 80 and pissing themselves in diapers. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. still looked at my grandmother and saw the 23-year-old runner-up mm-hmm. Miss South Africa that he married. I'm positive of it, yeah. because I remember him... Well, Vividly, and they had a very, yeah. very healthy sex life late in life. I'm sure of it. Yeah, unfortunately. So I'm not going <laughs> to argue that we're always it's always correct in what we perceive, but I will argue that when a woman says that the baby looks just like you, and if you thought that the baby did look like you, whatever that version of you is in your head, it would be a powerful, mo- powerful motivator. Of course, it would. It would be a hugely powerful. But motivator. you're saying there you were no, no you, data. We didn't have that same sense of self. Correct. Right. Okay. I agree we with know that. what our grunts sound like. We know, but I don't know that. What if, if it's you, the same grunt? Well then, I, then I would take care of it. Okay, maybe provide. that's the correct theory. Uh, I think uh, I think this is really interesting, and I, I think in my mind, you see someone one way, you cannot see them another way once you know them very well. I don't believe that we really knew what we looked like until several hundred years ago. I think we just had an image of ourselves, and the whole "the baby looks like you" is an interesting concept. Evolutionarily speaking, it's, it makes sense. It sounds good, but how do you know? <laughs> but you didn't know what you looked like. It's really I, cool. I had a friend, my sophomore year in college, one of my fraternity brothers was rich. Okay. A lot of them were. Yeah. This one was very rich. That's how that goes usually. Yeah. And he didn't want to write this paper for his evolution class, and it was a three-pager. And he was like, he was like, dude, you know, I was sort of like the poor kid in my fraternity. Yeah. And he was like, dude, I'll pay you 700 bucks. 700 bucks? To write this paper. I would have wow. retired in college if I had 700 bro. bucks. <laughs> you don't realize page how paper. much that meant to me. Like I was That's like, what I'm saying. That's I was huge like, money. How many times do I have to suck your cock? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'll give you 700 bucks. He's like, I can't write this tonight. Let's do tomorrow. Did no research. And right. I wrote a paper because I'd always had this theory about morning wood. <laughs> okay. Right? I definitely want to get circle back. To, or is that maybe that's where this is going? I want to hear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just had this idea about, because I, you know, even as a kid, I was like, why do I always wake up with a boner? Right. And so I always thought about it. 
And I was like, oh, I think I know why. So I wrote this whole paper. And, you know, I had Google or whatever at mm-hmm. the time. Uh, and I just wrote this paper about the, that morning wood. You can't pee with a boner. Very hard to pee. Very difficult. You, you could, but it's a nightmare. It's yeah, gonna yeah hurt. it goes everywhere. It's a mess. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so for letting me know. I've my, never experienced well, that. Well, you said it like you were <laughs> unsure as to what he was saying. My theory was basically that it, you know, in the time as we were evolving, that uh, it basically kept you from peeing in your sleep. It keeps you from peeing in your sleep. You get an erection. That way you don't pee. When <laughs> yep. you're relaxed, you don't pee the sure. fucking cave. Yeah. Right? It's a good pee, hypothesis. Pee's pee the very cave. fragrant. It's organic. Predators are going to smell it. <laughs> and so men with morning wood were more likely to survive, less likely to be attacked by a saber-toothed cat, et I like this. It's good logic. Selective evolution for boners. Wrote the paper. Yeah. I'm not making this up. Got an A. No way. <laughs> yep. 700 bucks. <laughs> Just threw out, threw out your uh, your hypothesis. Three double spaced pages, twelve point times New Roman. Great. Did you a. keep the paper? No, but I'm still in touch with the guy. You should publish. It. You got to get yeah. that. Yeah, paper. yeah, I should get that. I should <laughs> yeah. get that in the New England we need Journal that of Medicine. <laughs> yeah. um, I like that. Do you have a jingle? Uh, depends what game. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not, not a, a game. game. It's, it's, it's the it's the crux of what we do here. It's the reason. Okay. It's our hardcore We're like the fucking Wall journalism. Street Journal of yeah. the outdoors. Come on, you should have known. I I oh. This one? What's in the news? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Sorry, I got news from the underground. I like that. Who made that? Uh, on Discord, his name's MK, I believe. Okay. So. Well, thanks, MK. I mean, I could like be totally that. wrong. I mean, look, you're the guy. <laughs> you're the wildlife guy. You've got a book. I do have a book. Where you said I asked about brunch. Which you're not going to let this go. I can tell this is kind of <laughs> eating at you. Uh, you suggested it. What's in the news this week? What do you like? <laughs> What's in the news? Uh, I'll tell you. This is a fun one for me. Uh, top news story for me. Oversized goldfish are taking over a local Minnesota lake, causing an issue for all the native fish. All right. Okay. I'm thinking they're carp. Koi. Well, that's, and that's the thing. That's, yeah. where, that's why I wanted to dig yeah, into yeah, this yeah. guy. Because big fish. A, a very fish. large fish. Um, it here's the thing. What is a carp? It is literally just a goldfish. Now they're a different species, but a carp is just the same general family as these goldfish, and they've taken over all every body of water that they've been introduced to. Sure. But what you're seeing here, this is like your pet Jeez. store variety fancy goldfish. Right. And what in, the fuck is that thing? In Burnsville, Minnesota, I don't know why, because all right, let me, sorry, let me back up. Let me explain something here, <laughs> okay? When you dump a goldfish in a lake, you look at that thing, it's two inches long. Yep. It's a lure, right? Any fish in that lake goes, yum, yum, I'm going to go eat that, right? It's a swimming golden beacon that anybody <laughs> should go cruising over and chomp up. Sure, right. But for some reason, in uh, whatever I said, Burnsville, Minnesota, these goldfish are not getting eaten, or at least so many of them have been populated in this lake that they are getting to this gargantuan size. Now, I have a fish pond at home. Yep. I've got 30 goldfish in there that the turtles tear to shreds when they can catch them. <laughs> I've had those same goldfish in there for years, and sometimes I kind of restock when the numbers are getting low. I've never had one look like that mutant obesity. No, but yeah. it, I mean, this is the, uh, I don't know if it's an old wives' tale or whatever, but you always hear that the goldfish will grow to the size of right. the receptacle it's right. kept in. Right, right, yeah. right, right. But, like, I've also heard it's not really true, but these are some beefy bastards. For, for people who are only listening, I mean, that's that's about, uh, let's see, how, how what do you think? That's about a five-pound fish? Yeah, it's at least three. I mean, maybe up to five. It's a big, twelve inches long. Fish. It's the size of, like, to... three big male-sized human hands. Yep. Like Dude, across. and the weird thing is, look at that thing's face. It's got the face of, like, a soft-shell t- turtle. <laughs> it's got it's normal goldfish face yeah. and jar- gigantic oversized body where it's got this hump on its back. Yeah, its, it's head didn't grow. They're an atrocity, <laughs> right, in relation to its body. Yeah, um, it really is a mess. <laughs> and, and it's interesting Fucking because, hell. I mean, the problem is, so goldfish are very problematic. You know, they will they'll stir up lake bottoms. Their waste will increase uh, algae production, which can get in the gills of other fish and break it down. So it's actually like a pretty legit problem, and you don't want them to spread. Now, why these goldfish... Yuck. Goldfish are amazing, by the way. They can survive in, like, anything. Really? I, you, my, my aunt lives up in the mountains near Lake Arrowhead, and uh, she keeps two goldfish in, like, a wooden, like, half barrel, you know, yeah. like a little pond half barrel yeah, outside. Yeah. Yeah. Freezes over in the winter, three inches of ice, no problem. Goldfish, you know, doesn't feed them all winter. 
Do they do they go into some type of like hibernation? They go into like an estivation where they don't eat for periods of time. But yeah, they just, just everything slow down exactly, and they're about in the cold water. But anyway, I just thought it was kind of cool. The the point, you know, just because I haven't seen these giant mutant goldfish before. They shouldn't be that hard to eradicate because look at them. You know, they're, yeah. it's not that hard to find something like that. It's a basketball. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> they're in Minnesota. Basketball. You know, throw some muskie in there, some muskalunga, those giant pike. Okay. Where they should be anyway if they're in Minnesota. So throw some muskie in there. Muskie will eat up all the goldfish. Problem solved, I would think. Yeah, it says they live 25 years. Wow. Uh, and they reproduce very, very quickly. Yep. Also, it is an abomination. That goldfish was not meant to be that big. No, it's an abomination. <laughs> it says it's almost certainly just people freeing little goldfish that they yep. don't want to uh, keep anymore. They wow. are 10 cents each at Petco, you know, and people yeah. think this is actually, I want to get into something here. This is how serious I'm getting. Holy Rant shit. Time. Okay? Holy shit. This is serious. Okay. Shit drives me fucking bananas. Okay. <laughs> I just had a Shark Week show come out, right? Mm -hmm. Two of them. They were great. Everybody loved them, especially our Jaws of Alaska show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the only piece of negativity that I saw floating around was like one or two people being like, how can you catch that shark? That's so fucked up. We did it for science and put a DPS tag on it and got incredibly valuable data on it. Right, right, right. Those people that have this uneducated view of wildlife and doing the right thing yeah. hurt my profession and scientists and our understanding of the world. And the reason I bring that up, the reason I bring up that little piece of negativity, these things keep happening. So the people who dump those goldfish in that lake probably aren't bad people. They're probably people that are no. like, I want Scruffy the goldfish to live a nice life. Sure. Right. Well, Scruffy the goldfish can literally ruin North America. <laughs> right, You're not right. doing Scruffy the goldfish a service by throwing right. it in a lake in Minnesota. Yeah. You would be better to take that thing and bop it over the head, literally let it like dry out and die a terrible death, right. than you are to throw it in the lake. You are causing so much more environmental damage than you are doing good. Right. These things keep happening. PETA used to have this group of idiots that would <laughs> run around Southern California breaking into f rest like the red lobster and uh, and fucking fish markets and grabbing main lobster and dumping them in the ocean go free little lobster you're wow. literally taking lobster from Maine and throwing it in the ocean in California that can cause all kinds of biohazards right. and they're like we're doing it for the animals you might be doing it for an animal in the tank right that could literally wipe out an entire ecosystem. Sure. sure. Like to the point of mass, mass, mass scale extinction. Right. Well, look at the cane toads. I mean, isn't that what happened with that? Well, that was intentional because Australians are nuts. But um, true. Yeah. They didn't they know did it was going to go the way scale. it went. Right. Right. But my point is, like, there are these animal do-gooders, and I appreciate do-gooding in the animal world. That's what I do for a living. Yeah. But there are these sort of got people that think they know what they're doing or think they're in the right or right. think the animal rights are important for that creature. Mm -hmm. And the amount of damage that they have the potential to do is astronomical. Of course. Yeah. Bringing a lobster in from the East Coast on the West Coast, throwing a goldfish in a lake, the list goes, look at the fucking Florida Everglades. Like, the yeah. list goes on and on and on. <laughs> right. You have the ability to do so much damage by thinking you're doing something nice. Sure. So the message here is, like, just do a little bit of research. Like, sure. if you Google, should I put a goldfish in the lake? <laughs> right. You're going to get the answer. It's, right. it's going to pop up really quickly. Yeah, super so, invasive. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I want to just go on a little rant there because yeah. uh, these kind of animal welfare, like I'm doing the right thing. I appreciate the mo mentality. I can't stand when the right thing has in someone's mind who's uneducated has the potential to destroy the planet and that's right. not being over. I mean, that's the yeah. problem with, uh, you know, with everything today. It's the lack of critical thinking, even right. though we have the, like the world at our fingertips right on the phone. Yep. You don't, you need some kind of cue to push you there. A Crazy. sign that says when you buy the goldfish, do not put this goldfish. And then you'll be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't put this goldfish in the lake. Something, you know? But yeah, people, yeah, but that's crazy because there's like this lack of common sense. Absolutely. If I own a pet store, are you telling me it's my responsibility to put up a sign that says, don't release don't. your pet goldfish in the lake? Right, like, that's right. insane. No, it is insane. I it's mean, it's insane. Yeah. People. Well, with the amount that are in that lake, too, it could be like some activist, not like it would be an organized thing, but who knows? Somebody might have went in and bought 40 bucks worth of goldfish and been like, free goldfish. Totally. totally. And thought um, they were doing a good thing. Totally. It yeah. could have been. And, you, and we'll never know, but it's just like, don't do good if the good's harmful. Like, just don't. Just yeah, be in, it's, it's, just get get on with your business, you know? I yeah. have a uh, story I wanted to bring up here. Let's do it. It's fantastic. So, 
There are 13 captive elephants in Kent, which is, I think, near London, but it's somewhere Kent, in the England. UK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not yep. familiar? 13 uh, domestic elephants, we could call them, or captive elephants. I think they were being kept at like a little wildlife park. Okay. They're being repopulated back to Kenya. Oh, that's cool. Right? So these, this whole herd is going to be brought. Here's where it gets good, Ritap. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. On a Sorry. single 747. They're going to load 13 African elephants onto one 747. <laughs> what? And repopulate them back to Kenya. Do they have to each buy one or two seats? <laughs> Good joke, Ritap. Yeah. Well, uh, of course, <laughs> laughed. <laughs> but, uh, but so I saw, uh, it's cool, right? I mean, it's cool. Th- it's really cool. Would you, um, as far as elephants go, would you imagine that captive elephants would have a good chance of, of making it in the wild? They are so intelligent. So typically, I'd kind of say no. Okay. Right to your average your average critter. Um, you know, you put your dog outside. My dog wouldn't last two days. You know, <laughs> like it's, he's not becoming a wolf overnight and heading back out to Yellowstone. <laughs> right. Um, elephants, absolutely. Will they figure it out? Now they're going to be put somewhere where they're relatively protected. I'm sure. My guess would be predator free. Maybe not, but they'll make it. They're I'm also so they're big, it. it's like, who's going to fuck with an elephant? Well, no, a lot of things fuck with elephants. Yeah. 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 Or like a pride pr- of lions. Pr- yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, groups yeah, yeah. of animals, yeah. I suppose. No, they do. I mean, a big a big dominant elephant's not getting a lot of pressure, but, but I think they'll make it, is my point. But again, back to our let's use modern tech. I mean, we, we built something that can take a whole herd of elephants. Bananas. In a single flight. So it made me think of something. It made me think of a, maybe you have a jingle for it. As God is my witness, I will uncover the mystery that is Pat. Math. I'm pretty good with numbers. It's Pat. Math. Whoever made these are, is a fucking genius. His name is MK. MK is really funny. Or, or you the lady. Or yep. whatever. Can, okay. I, can I throw a wrench towards you as you do Pat's math? Sure. So I've done. If it affects my pre-figured out math, then no, absolutely <laughs> okay. not. So maybe I shouldn't. Then never mind. Let's continue. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can't do the math on the. Let's this circle back a afterwards. Calculator, no, that guys. makes sense. That makes sense. I'm doing parabolas. Okay. This is calculus. Wow. Yeah, let's go. Geometry. Let's go. I just right. might. I might. I might so, spoil it at the end. We'll right, see how right, we go. Right. So I've got 13 elephants on a 747. Mm-hmm. Okay. Going one way ticket, Kenya. Yeah, Kenya. Kenya. How many to carry the same amount of weight? That they're going to carry in these 13 elephants mm-hmm. on this plane. Yeah. How many male African lions I would, even they, would they have to put on the plane? Human beings. How many African lions? Okay, so let's see. So a large African elephant's like 12, 13,000 pounds. A lion is like 500, 600 pounds. No, that's even too big, right? Like Maybe 400 three, pounds. 400 pounds. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Jesus. Uh, math's hard. I'm going to say... I'll chime in here. Go ahead. I'm going 250. Okay. What's up? 250? Test what you got. 250, 13,000. Uh, I'm going to say that it's about... That's pretty close to what I'd guess. I'm going to say... Look, I'll take the over. I'll go 300. Yeah. 422 lions. That's a lot of lions. Which nice I'd rather move. be on the plane with the elephants, I think. <laughs> The only thing is they well, move yeah. around, and then now, yeah, you'd no. rather be with the lion. Well, because right? of the weight, I mean, they got to be listen. Here's the thing. Look, well. I, I've done some elephant <laughs> movement. And I, I'm guessing there's more Pat's math. Yeah, I got a few more. But yeah, that's all right. All but before we dig into that, I've done some elephant work. I've moved a few elephants. It's not the animal waking up, right? You can keep them in a drowsy, sedated state. I mean, it's sure. nerve wracking. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. you know, if an African elephant, if an African lion wakes up. Whatever, you got a 200 pound an- kitty running around, right? That's fine. Okay. Doesn't sound great. It's not great. 300, 400 it's not great. Doesn't sound amazing. Whatever. <laughs> if you get a 13,000 pound, I mean, you know how they have to space out the seats when the plane's half empty so that you don't mess yeah, the weight oh, up. Oh, yeah, you're right. You get a 13,000 pound yeah. elephant charging towards the front of the plane, it's going down. It's going down. That's mate. all weight displacement. Oof. It's a mess. It's yeah. true. Yeah. And that is a way bigger <laughs> risk than like. You know, and they're top heavy. Like when we moved them in trucks, yeah. One of the biggest concerns was if one decided to lean really hard on a corner because you just roll the whole oh, semi. Oh, just roll the whole. The yeah, whole semi would roll. Of course, no they're, so, they're so top heavy. Jeez, man. Um, how many 
I'm still going. So I'm how going many Tas- how many Tasmanian devils? <laughs> would you, oh my, they're would not you have to load into a plane uh, to be the same payload as thirteen? Thirty thousand. Okay. I'm gonna not use that strategy. I'm gonna say eighteen thousand. Nine thousand four hundred. Okay. I went really less. <laughs> yeah, it I would also be over. the equivalent of about a thousand people on a plane. Okay, that was what I was. I, I, I was curious how many people. Oh, no, that that's if be. the people are watching what they're eating. A thousand people on a plane. That's a big plane. I what mean, are those big, big like double decker? Well, I'm doing it by take? weight. I'm doing it by seven, weight. Seven, seven, seven. I think no, so seven forty seven is the biggest plane. I thought. I thought he was right. I thought no, the seven. There's seven, a seven, seven, seven. seven, seven. No, fuck off. No All right, chance. you can fact check Pat on both the math. And the 777 plane oh, fact. The, ma- the math is correct, at sir. The Spiceman. The Airbus Instagram. 380 carries 853 passengers. Damn, that's big. I didn't know it was yeah. that big. Or, and then here's the last one My cat Lemley. <laughs> How many Lemleys <laughs> would it take to equate 13 African In elephants? In my head, it's now easier to go, okay, it's 1,000 people. Okay. How many Lemleys is that? <laughs> that? That's what I'm doing in my head. I'm going. I'm going thirty thousand Lemley. <laughs> no, 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 no. If so, it was, it was what was it? it was eight thousand Tasmanian devils, ish. Ninety four hundred thousand people. It, it's unfair because you know how big the Tasmanian devils are. It's okay. Though. You don't even know what one is. I'm gonna say they get cancer on their faces. I'm gonna say it's seven thousand three hundred forty three Lemleys. Twenty one thousand four hundred. <laughs> You're killing you it. You still dude. won Lemleys. though because I went over. But. Which, by the way, what a fun flight. What? With yeah. all of them? 21,000 cats? I, I think people, them? Yeah. people would pay extra for that flight. Have you, cat you, flight. Have you, cat flight. Have yeah. you, have you Especially if you're not allergic. A cat cafe? Are you familiar with I haven't, this? but that's what I thought right when he said it. There's one cat flight. Cat, there's, there's one there's in West one, Hollywood. There's one half a block from here. Are you serious? Jessica's friend owns it. It's it's one half of a block from Can here. Can we go after the Is she the making money? I have no idea. Probably not. <laughs> I'm assuming no. Has anyone that's owned a cat cafe ever made money? I think that's like money? a passion, a passion type of business. I, I don't know that you're making millions on that. Uh, do, okay, let me ask you this, because I would like to go into a kitten cafe or a cat cafe. So cat cafes, they're not, uh, it's not a bunch of feral cats that are like pissing and scratching you. <laughs> they're adorable, <laughs> no. fluffy kittens. They're and young they kittens. Around, they go for right? adoption. Okay, so they're up for adoption. Yeah, and it's every, a good every yeah. latte and cappuccino at the cafe is made with cat milk. Got it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's not right? That sounds delicious. Can you milk a cat? You can milk anything with nipples, fucker. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. Uh, boy. What else you got, Farouz? That's a good... Do you get that reference? Farouz? Get that reference? Yeah, of okay, course. Meet good. the Farouz. One of my favorite movies. You're just proud of how quickly you thought of it. I, it came out quick, yeah. yeah. You're fired. Um, I'm firing on all <laughs> cylinders. Speaking of things that we like as much as kitty cafes on this pod, scientists filmed a glass octopus... For I think the first time or one of the only times. Now we're pretty obsessed with octopi in this oh, yeah. in this pod. In case if you're not watching, you'd understand if you looked at the YouTube. Right. I mean, literally look at our sign. Oh um, wow, look at this thing. This glass, that's not it. Um Really? Yeah. Oh, there that's it is. It. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off, advertisement news stories. I, was like, I don't know what you're looking at. The oh, glass octopus is this incredible creature. It is translucent. You can see right through it, or transparent rather. Um, you can see right through, you can see its organs. Wow. Here's the whole thing. I just brought this up because I wanted Peter to freak out a little bit. It's not like, yeah, cool, they filmed a hard-to-find deep-sea creature. Peter, dude, I'm looking at this thing. First of all, it has a fishing lure as a brain, which is very interesting. (laughs) I mean, it's got wings, the whole thing. Like, Uh, also, like, it has a galaxy in its, in its web tentacle and this type is thing. Si- this is scientifically sound what he's just said <laughs> it has a fishing yeah. lure for a brain factual have Where you guys ever seen it? back up on the link okay scroll down because this is what i want you to see oh this. wow yeah, look at here this we go. here we go if you're listening live we are reviewing a video a video of a glass octopus. oh my god look at it it's got gold flecks in it this is an alien they definitely <laughs> fucking this made up. this. This is why I brought this up. Just yeah. They created yeah. this. Yeah. That This is what aliens have been coming down for all these years so we could harvest gold so they oh. could create these okay. to come back and live mm. in our oceans. They're going to take over soon, gentlemen. Okay. It's, it's, it's headed down. Look at this fucking thing. This thing is, this this is, is not this of the earth. Isn't that incredible? No, this is not, a, this is not an earth-born creature. This and, is and that's, wild. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, no, that's great. Yeah. I the, love it. But look, I, all all like lunacy of retaps aside and all jokes Even aside, its tentacles are weird. If and you sucker found cups. that on Mars, on any other planet, <laughs> yes. I wouldn't even be surprised. 
I'd be no. like, yeah, okay, that's well, about what that's, I thought an alien looked okay. like. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be like, a, yeah, that adds up. There's a movie sure. called. Your, so the same year that Gravity came out, that piece yeah. of shit movie. You didn't like it? Love that movie. Fucking hated it. Interesting. I thought it was I unwatchable like. trash. Is that the? That's the. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Oh no no! I was thinking oh. of the. I was thinking of a different. I one. was thinking Contact. Never mind. <laughs> oh, Contact's amazing. Yeah, I was written by that. one of my professors actually. Okay, oh, cool. Any oh. gay? Was he rich too? Like Sorry your about buddies? That. Uh, no, but guy. Europa Report came out that same year as an indie film. Oh, okay. Where they went and and they went. Uh, they felt like they had intelligence about um, there being moon. life on a, one of the moons of Saturn. Saturn. Okay. And they find, and it looks exactly like this glass octopus. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, now, is this a known species, or is That's this a new discovery? Yeah. No, this is a known species, but it's a species that I don't believe any video or maybe very little video has ever been captured of. Um, you know, it's, it's... Wow. It's incredible footage, honestly, man. I mean, this is, thing... Is that a super deep water animal? It's got to be, right? Yes, it is. Um, Crazy cool. Uh, another part of this that I found really interesting, I'm just looking at it now because I was so blown away by the octopus, I didn't even notice this. They were doing this deep sea investigation when they filmed this thing. They also spotted a rare deep water whale shark. We don't know if that's its own species, if that's a surface species that's gone down deep. There's Do you no know, video. Wait, how, uh, no uh, video. does it say how deep they were? Uh, I'd have to check right here. What would probably, you... probably in the article itself. It's a very, like, you know, skim the, skim the surface kind of article. So whale sharks are very often up near the surface, right? Yes, I mean, that's correct. why they're pretty easy to swim with, and mm -hmm. every Instagram influencer has a picture of them swimming with correct. a whale shark. Correct, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is that, because to me, that's fascinating. Right. That there's a, they found a whale, sh did it look different? It doesn't say. I mean, okay. I haven't read, so I haven't read, so this is from a journal, right? Sure. But this is just a little article that covered it in the Environment Magazine or in Huffington Post. And so I haven't read the full article. I literally got as far as, Oh my God! Look at this octopus. Right. Peter needs to see this so he can freak out. <laughs> so he can, I that's, can't that's stop looking at this. That's as deep as I got on this one. Yeah. So just to be uh, clear, I can't stop looking at this thing, man. It is amazing. I, I, does, so does, does this thing have the qualities of a regular octopus where it can change color and and do I all don't that? I wouldn't. I no. highly doubt it because it it's, it's got translucent or transparent skin. It wouldn't. Yeah, like, because I mean, I, I'm guessing those gold flecks are capable of changing okay. a little bit, but there's no way that this is going to change. And this also, to me looks like, and again, I don't know this, but it looks like a pelagic octopus, meaning it just drifts out in the ocean. It's not sucking down to the ground and changing. So the reason all those octopus have that camouflage, the intelligent chromatophores where they can change their skin color and texture yeah. is to blend into the environment. Yeah. Well, Seen when your environment times. is drifting in the deep open sea, right. the best way to blend in is to be see-through. And so that's what you're seeing here. <laughs> well, see-through with a big flashy lure in your head for well, some yeah. reason. <laughs> no, that that is probably what that is. It's to, probably to, to capture food. Things. Yeah, cuz in food? the deep sea there's a lot of that, right? There's lantern fish and there's yeah. there's a lot of that going right. on. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought this was a visual that it you couldn't amazing. do without. I mean, I just thought it was so That's stunning. Super cool. I've got yeah. a new wallpaper for well, my computer. Well, here's a visual. <laughs> here's a visual for you. Okay. You're asleep. <laughs> Having a peaceful dream. Nice. Perfect. Very nice. You had a cheeseburger and fries for dinner. Mm, Oof, lovely. Lovely. You know what else you had? Taco Bell. Two, two nice glasses of Cabernet Sauvignon. So cold? I'm very cold? Well. Oh, Chill. not only that, you don't have to get up in the morning. You didn't even set an alarm. Oof. You're having a good old sleep. So this is like Forest Circa 05. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but you're having one of those like rare sleeps where yeah. you're like, I'm just going to fucking pass out. Dead to the world. Like when we get home from a shoot. Oh, yeah. the best. All right. So you hear some skittering under your bed. You hear a little bit of that going on. Okay. You're like, what the fuck? I got a clean house. I shouldn't have a cockroach <laughs> under there. I got a clean house. Yeah, I, I maintain a tight ship here. Yeah, that's fair. You look down, and if you were Trish Wilcher from Georgia, mm. guess what she saw? She's in Georgia. Possum. Let me put it this way. There was 18 of them. Feral cats. 18 <laughs> possum. Um, yeah, I don't know. Bugs, bugs. Big, big spiders no. or something. 18 snakes. Snakes. Yeah. It's a lot of snakes. In her house. In Georgia? Has no idea how they got in there. In Georgia. Uh, Rat snakes? Garter. Harmless. Oh, interesting. Harmless garter snakes, but not known to congregate in large groups. A bunch of them were little babies. Yeah. But think about fucking 18 snakes under your bed. Bro, I was with you at a Motel 6 after the last recording session here. Yeah, we were. And we had bought a very large pizza, and there was two slices left. 
Went back to the Motel 6 room, <laughs> ate one slice, popped the other slice. Were you talking about last weekend? Yeah. 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 Pop yeah the last slice. time we recorded here. In yeah, Santa yeah, yeah. Pop the slice on the fucking table, sit down. Box okay. closed. Box closed. Okay. Yeah. Sit down, get ready for bed. We're laying there, like, like giggling like schoolgirls, like having a sleepover, having a beer before we're going to crash. Separate beds, of course. And uh, <laughs> I get up, and I'm, I'm like, all right, well, there's one last piece of pizza. I'm definitely not going to let it sit here all night. I open the fucking pizza. What was on it, Pat? I would say a cockroach that was, like, the size. No, here in Santa Barbara. Yeah. At the Motel 6. I mean, massive. Yeah, that's, that's Dude, nasty. massive. Co- $300 really a night for a fucking... So this is why you guys are both staying at my house tonight? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. that adds up. That's yeah. exactly why. Anyways, <laughs> Pat's like, bro, he's like, that's it. He's like, we're going to wake... Whoever wakes up first and turns on the light is just going to see a thousand cockroaches <laughs> scatter from under their blanket. Like, just... 45 minutes in, the cockroach had infiltrated the pizza box and yeah. was literally eating mozzarella cheese. On top cheese. of the slice. Covered yeah. in uh, pizza oil, dude. I'm just like... The real question, do you still smash the slice? No! Yeah. Okay. He got that shit out of dude, the Dude, yeah, I was smart. disgusted for days. But anyways, the snakes, I think it'd be better <laughs> than so, the so, cockroach. Okay, so check dude, this out. Yeah. That's, it's interesting. I've seen a few garter snake gatherings. So they will do it a little Interesting. bit. Interesting. Now, okay. typically they do it in very cold weather environments. And while I'm telling the story, Peter, pull up narcissist snake dens, please. Okay. And a video would be ideal if you don't mind. So typically they do this in cold weather environments. It gets too cold, the snakes will jump into one hole together because there's only gotcha. a handful of holes, blah, 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 okay. you know. But garter snakes, like f- tomorrow, if we decide to hike around Santa Barbara, we could go to a creek called Seven Falls area. Right. You can find certain pools where in that pool... There'll be four or five garter snakes around that one pool because there's a bunch of frogs, a okay. bunch of tadpoles, and they're all like all right. stuck in there. But why in Georgia this many garter snakes would end up under someone's bed to me is truly a mystery. That's, that's a lot of fucking that's snakes. Fucking weird, man. But look at this place. So this is Narcissus snake dens. This is one of my highest bucket list places to go. And the problem is this only happens for about two days where something like 70,000 snakes come out of the ground. See if you can find a video, Peter. It's incredible. 70,000 or so garter snakes will come out of these like handful of holes all at the same time. And it is literally biblical the way these snakes gather and come spitting out of the ground uh, just as the weather warms up enough for them to all emerge at the same time. What kind of snakes are these? These are garter snakes. Really? Really. So see them all coming out of their dens. There, they're mating. See how they're how all they're all there chasing. Are there? Those are all males, and the one in the center that's getting oh, wow. pounded is a female. Gotcha. And they're all trying to mate with her. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's like, nightmarish. It, it, but could you oh, imagine yeah. like, so so okay, this is in Canada, right? So it's colonized by the English, right? You're a, you're a you're a you're a monocled Brit. Mm-hmm. You've come <laughs> over. You've I come know. over to the. They North, all are, aren't they? They all, of course, yeah. yeah. You've come over to North America. You know, you're exploring. You're Sounds spreading great. out. You yeah. know, you're in this new area called Manitoba, as yep. named after some other monocled Brit, I presume. <laughs> and, um, you know, you're walking. Weather's starting to warm up. It's a yeah. nice day. It's first nice day in a few weeks. You look down, 70,000 snakes. Puke shit. Cut I my mean, own dick that's off. like you go back to England and you're like, we're not going there. God yeah. has smited that <laughs> yeah. land. We Definitely. shall never take that place. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just yeah. like, it's just forget it. it. Forget yeah. it. Like, we're and, out. and you don't know anything about snakes because you're a Brit. You know, so it's just, I mean, I love snakes. I think it would be super cool to see this. But on first glance, as a first person to see this, it's a complete nightmare. Dude, the Russian fur traders that came over, I don't know when, you know, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of years ago, came over basically just, you know, trapping. Yeah. And landed, you know, sort of in the islands that are off the coast of Alaska, um, you know, Kodiak and a bunch of those places. And they built churches and they were there to to get fur. And there there was so so many fucking bear. They were like, yeah, we're out. Right. Yeah. They just were like, this is literally abandoned. This is untenable. It's it's not livable. Yeah. But it's cool because when you go to those islands, you can, everyone has a, has a Christian church. Yeah. From the Russian fur traders who were, you know, the first people besides the Inuits that lived on the island. And just eventually they were like, these islands suck, man. I like those stories. <laughs> so I like cool. the story of human came, like tried to conquer, was like, nope, animals, yeah. too scary, leaving. The bear won, man. The bear yeah, won. they're the yeah. alpha. I love that. Yeah. I think that's so cool. Um, well, speaking of animals winning. I was just going to say. What? Were you going to talk about? I was going to go to another story. Do you um, have something else going on? No, go ahead. I thought okay. you were going to talk about the... Uh, 
battle royale pictures that we'll get to later. Oh, no, we should talk about that. That's great. That would have been a better segue. But um, (laughs) with regarding uh, more news stuff, yeah, there's been a lot of fish on drugs lately. You know this? (laughs) Well, a couple podcasts ago, you were telling me about a bunch of fish that were addicted to meth. Yeah. Right. What's going on? You got something else? What's the matter with fish? In 2021, what are they doing? Drugs, it's fucking mate. social media, dude. It's, <laughs> Drugs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know what's going on. So there's this area, I think it's in Germany. All of a sudden, they're witnessing salmon going nuts. They're at fish farms. They're jumping against the wall. They're banging their heads. In fish farms? In fish farms. Okay, so there's okay. a controlled environment. Controlled environment. Yeah, salmon yeah, are yeah, going yeah. bonkers. Makes no sense. They're acting erratically. No, it's nuts. Jumping yeah. up against walls. Okay. Salmon are all doing coke. What? Doing coke? They're doing coke. Salmon are snorting you go, lines. You can go ahead and explain that. I sure can. So they're, they're <laughs> trying to figure out what's going on with the salmon. Why are they behaving this way? Right. They do a water analysis. They go all the normal pharmaceutical levels. Like, yes, there's a little bit of runoff. There's a little bit of this. Sure, pesticides, sure, sure. whatever. Everything's One fine. One per million meth. Well, you know, yeah. No, but at that point, there's no meth. It's okay. just, it's just, everything's it's all fine. Normal, normal, you know, normal. everything's fine. No okay. unusual findings. Then they're like, wait a minute. Like, we need to look deeper do another test. Sure enough, there is an illegal discharge okay. of cocaine. Somebody is dumping coke into this fish farm to get rid of it. They're, they're, they got, they got it. They, I don't know why. There's no explanation. They're, they're, they're getting rid of coke. It's going into the fish farm. Trout are going nuts. So, so they, they figured this out because of this picture, I'm assuming. The, the, the trout or the fish are just jumping like maniacs. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, if you work at a fish farm every day, you're used to fish acting a certain way. Yeah, exactly. All, all of a sudden, they start you know doing this shit, water falling out the side of the tank. Something's yeah. going on. <laughs> um, good news, I guess, is that. Oh, and by the way, this is assumed that it was done by European drug gangs. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, the dump toxic way. You know, dump toxic. What is a coke. fish? If if we were to stumble upon a fish farm, what would it look like? I've never seen a fish farm. Oh, I love fish farms. I I, I thought right. for a long time. Like late high school, early college kind of thing. I was like, oh, I'd love to go into aquaculture. Like that's the future of sustainable protein. Okay. I was very into it. So very, it's a great question. It's almost like asking, what does a farm look like? Well, okay. a vineyard looks very different from a from a cattle farm, you know, so on and so forth. So it's okay. it just depends. But for the most part, you have these big round tanks. Okay. Water can circulate. Uh, I'm talking about freshwater farms here. Thank you. Yeah. One tank for your fingerlings, your tiny little fish, or your spawn. One tank for your fingerlings. One tank How for your medium fish. How big are these tanks, though? Is this like the size of the pool in my gallon, backyard? At least. No, 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 <laughs> not twenty so, gallons. Or is it more of like a pond? <laughs> no, it's it's like a giant elevated concrete pond. It's like a small lake, typically. So whoever's dumping this coke knows they're not just dumping it in a fucking. It's pond intentional. Or a lake. Well, 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 let me be clear. So the way that most of these fish farms keep the water circulating is they're mm-hmm. built in a way that their elevation and natural water is feeding them. So you gotcha. have to, if you put 10,000 okay. fish in a small pond, you have to have massive circulation because okay. the water goes bad, they all die. Gotcha. So you have a mm-hmm. creek, the creek flows in, runs through all these tanks and flows out okay. in the simplest form. So these European drug gangs are dumping coke in the creek, you know, a quarter mile away, right? ending up I don't know. Well, why it's got to be. They, why would you dump your coke? Your they, coke is your product, it, right. baby. They get. They had to have like been ditching it or something, or maybe I it was a bad batch, you. toxic. Who knows? I, well, it was I toxic nothing, thing, probably. I mean, Forrest, it's your job to go out there and stop this. It is. Yeah, I so, need. I need to hit Germany. I need to go and yeah, clean up the streets, clean up the creeks, Just get rid of that coke. That's mate. right. Um, if anyway, Forrest was a superhero, I, what do you think his name would be? Lion Man. Yeah, Lion Man. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's not for debates. Right? Uh, yeah, but anyway, I just look. There's two drugs, two two fish on drug stories in two weeks, dude. That doesn't happen all the time. I want to well. do something. Stop me if this is too crazy, bros. <laughs> so we do. Uh, for those who join the Patreon, we do four additional podcasts a month, and uh, we've been doing a segment on there where we do a behind the scenes. Yep. Of Extinct or Alive episodes. Yep. Right? And we just get into stories, stuff that didn't air. Yep. If it was your favorite moment, Ratep has realized that filming the show is the most fun thing that anyone's ever done. Yeah. Yeah. There's a petition that I go on the next one if there's a season three. There is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's get that going. <laughs> but we, so we've done three parts. Those are on the Patreon, which uh, Ratep will link to. I want to do the final two episodes on the regular podcast. Mm. Whoa. Is that, is that insane? No. no. Let's do it. Great. Let's we can do it do tonight. It. We can do it right now. Let's do it right now. <sighs> Ratep doesn't have a jingle ready per usual. Yeah, but you know, I do have this. 
Wow, yeah! Yeah, uh, that gets me in the mood. I like All right, it. so we've done 18 or 19 other episodes over there on the Patreon. Yep. You know why I like this gentleman? I can relax for a minute and just enjoy the stories. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. All right, Forrest. Yep. So here's the two we haven't done. The final episode of season two, The Southern Rocky Mountain Wolf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Set us up. Yeah, so uh, there was a wolf subspecies called the Southern Rocky Mountain Wolf. Uh, used to inhabit parts of the Sierras uh, all the way into the Rocky Mountains. It was like a shaggy, brownish, tannish wolf. Yep. Um, and as we all, well, maybe not we all, but as we have noted, wolves are starting to make a comeback in yeah, all California. Yeah, all, yeah. all over. But, you know, yeah. they're, they're all the way there. Except in Wisconsin. They're We're literally right there. Over. Like, we're in Santa Barbara County. Next county over, San Luis Obispo County. Wolves, wolves have made it to now, That's cool. which is fantastic. So our our theory, our hypothesis, after hearing from a rancher that we got in touch with, was that maybe in this very remote part of the Sierras, they never left. Yeah. You know, maybe there was just a very... A little pocket. A little pocket, you know, yeah. remote area. Maybe there's just a couple Southern Rocky Mountain wolf or, or something bred them out because, you know, sure. wolves, coy wolves, coyotes, dogs, like they all interbreed. Yeah. Let's go search. Yeah. Right? So that's yeah. it. That was a very simple setup. That's what we did. Up to the mountains, up to the Sierras. Beautiful area. Oh, my God. So man. as the layman, what's uh, what's unique about the wolf? Because I'm looking at a picture of it right now. and uh, Well, it's, ex- it's extinct. It's an extinct uh, subspecies uh, of gray wolf. Okay. Yeah. So see that? I mean, there isn't... I mean, that's that's not it. Like, you're right. better to go to the diagram. But, you know... Oh, there you go. Pull that up. So there's this a um, phylogenetics map. No, see the map uh, under the picture? That this thing. One. Okay. So those were all your subspecies of wolf across North America. So people often think, oh, we got a wolf in America. We got gray wolves. It's the same kind in Montana. It's the same kind in Yellowstone. It's the same. It's not, okay? Yeah. There were tons and tons of isolated subspecies. And what you're looking at oh, here okay. is all the different subspecies of wolf. Right. Some some are, you know, they look more black. Some are a little more stout. Yep. Some have shorter legs. Exactly. Okay. They're all just and, a little bit different based on geography. And it's a product the of their environment. Like yeah. dog right. breeds, kind of, except yeah, more yeah. closely no, very, related. Very much so. Yeah. It's a product of your environment, right? If you're hunting raccoons in the Florida Everglades, you're not the same animal as the one hunting caribou right. in, in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and you evolve right. to determine that. In Florida, you get a shorter coat because it's hotter out. You know, your paws need to be bigger because you're mm-hmm. running through swamp all the time. You know, in the grasslands, you're a different animal. Up north, you get a big shaggy coat. You've got a stronger sure. jaw, so yeah. on and so forth. You evolve and adapt to meet your environmental needs. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Does that answer your question well enough? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Anyway, yeah. so let's get into it. This was a fun shoot. Um... I had a great time on this one. Great crew up in the mountains. Cold as shit. Yeah. Really cold. fucking cold. Cold. Every Climbing, single day. I hiking. just remember the constant, my constant concern. I was like, this is going to be the time where I take off my boot and my toes are going to be black. <laughs> like, cause, cause, you know, you'd lose feeling in the toes. Like, yeah. You know, six hours into the day, and you're like, "Yeah, this is the time. I lose my toes <laughs> yeah. today." Yeah. The avalanche was cool; that made it, yeah, into the cut. Yeah. What was your favorite moment or least favorite moment that was not that didn't make the cut? Favorite or least favorite didn't make the cut. Oh, you know what? Didn't make the cut. I think we lost the footage. What was it? You'll remember when we spent the the first night in the snow shelter. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and like so. This is adorable, by the way. <laughs> so we're we're out there, and I'm telling the this guys. This was cute, man. It was cute. Yeah. I'm telling the guys, I'm like, look, we all have tents, right? We're camping. Right. We're, we're hiking around the Sierras. We're camping at high elevation. It's beautiful. And I'm like, look, guys, it's stormy out here. It's freezing. Yeah. you got to get into the snow. Yeah. The snow, you got to make a drift, which means you basically dig a hole, mm-hmm. ba- like build an igloo, basically. Yeah, yeah. And get into the snow and sleep. <laughs> and the guys are like, the guys are like, ah, I don't know, dude. Like, you know, I, I got my North Face. Like, it's pretty sweet. And, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I mean, they are sweet, but like, one, yeah. it's, one, we're making TV here, so I'm going to show everybody how to build <laughs> like a snow shelter. Right. And two, I'm going to be warmer. So yeah. night one, you know, we have a fire. It's cool. You're hearing howling in the distance. It was coyotes or wolves. We're not sure, but it was rad, and it's cold, and really cold, as Patrick's pointing out, and everybody goes to sleep. And this never made the show. I don't remember if somebody filmed it or not. Never made the show, but... Um, you posted an Instagram video that was kind of a joke video. Right, from the daytime. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. then the nighttime rolled around, and I made it the snow shelter big, like enough that we could all, I wouldn't say comfortably, but we all fit. Yes. Mm-hmm. He sort so of. he we filmed it cuz he was like I'm going to sleep in this. I was like right. all right, let's film it. It's right. cool. There's a little survival element to the mm-hmm. show whatever. Yeah. So we filmed him making it. Right. And then 
kind no of chuckled. One, nobody yeah. else made one, even though he was like, you really might want to make one. Right. Yeah. Right. I was like, Forrest, if my tent blows down, I'll just wear it like a burrito. Right. Like, I'm yeah. not, yeah. I'm not building know, a snow cool, shelter. They're too cool. They're too tough. And by the way, like, we all have very good snow gear. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you, you kind of get where this sto- story's going. Sit around the fire. You know, we eat some snacks, whatever. We call it a night. I climb into my snow shelter. I'm cold in the best snow shelter, which is insulated. I've got pine branches in there. I put snow over the top, everything. Yeah. Okay. About an hour later, I think, I think was it Johnny first, Mitch first? I can't remember. When I went into the snow shelter, I remember Justin was already in there and sleeping. He might have been the first. He was the first. Because he was snoring. So loudly. And we're talking about something about the size of three of these tables. Yes. Right. <laughs> Anyway, and Justin and, <laughs> yes. and Justin was in there yeah. and snoring as oh, if nobody else ju- existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, everybody ended up in the snow shelter for yeah. the night. Yeah, it got Keeping real up. cuddly. And by the way, beautifully warm. S- super warm. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, we melted all the snow. <laughs> now, did you all have boners so that you wouldn't have to pee? Don't worry about that. You don't want to pee. Okay. You okay. do not want to pee. Don't worry don't about was Johnny's check. dick healed by this time? This was oh. after the Johnny it was dick. That's a throwback to the Patreon. Yeah, it was. It was. That's a Patreon story. Yeah. But, uh, but that was, yeah, I thought that was funny. That was, was really like, good. Yeah, it's cute. Everybody kind of sheepishly trickled into the snow shelter throughout the night, and then it got nice and toasty. We were that all was, over each yeah, other in good. not the best way. Yeah, <laughs> but so remember that so, warmth is so nice. Mm, it doesn't even matter, I imagine, you know? I'm sure there's some hipster chef on Instagram, and, and this is cool if you're doing this, but I know it's out there. I've never looked. I guarantee there's some, like, Brooklyn hipster restaurant where they, <laughs> they're only serving roadkill. It must be. Yeah. We did the equivalent of eating roadkill, and it was so good. We ate so well, man. Yeah, yeah. we found what? this deer that had been uh, eaten; its guts had been eaten now. As yeah, I it it. oh yeah, gut yeah, yeah. Had been eaten now. It was fresh though, and it was in an icy environment. Yeah, right, it was super right. fucking cold. Yeah, <laughs> we dragged it for a while. Forrest and Justin made this uh, fucking delicious stew, mm-hmm. like this brown gravy stew yeah. out of this venison. Yep. Right. Holy shit, that was good. It's really good. Also, the last night when we went back to the cabins, um, what did we, we got really drunk. Nice. <laughs> On what? We were drinking tons that, of shit. That's uh, important. Hot toddies. We were drinking hot toddies, uh, dude. Hot we had toddies, a bunch yeah. of red wine. Yeah. It was just de- fucking delightful. It was fun. Dude, when you haven't had a drink in nine or ten days. Yeah. Right. And you've been living in the and snow. And you've been cold. And, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you start get, a fire fun. up, man. Oh, yeah. And uh, so the drinks are flowing. We ordered, like, cheeseburgers. And uh, what was it? We were playing this game. What's the game where you fucking, the, the trivia Spin game the where bottle? you put the thing on your head? Oh. Oh, oh heads up. Heads up. Yeah. yeah. Played heads up for, like, four hours. Yep. Yeah. Died laughing. Didn't find a wolf. Did Didn't not. Find no. Wolf. Found found a koi wolf, a big coyote. Yeah, what, so what's your what's your honest take on what that was? Because basically what happened was, for anyone who hasn't seen it, yeah. trail camera caught a real, what looked like a wolf to me. You were like, I, I don't, can't say this is a wolf. It, yeah. I mean, it had wolf-like features because it was so big. It had such a broad snout. Yeah. You know, but the, the truth is, and a lot of people don't realize this, if you look at a coyote right next to a wolf, certain species of wolf, yeah. look at a coyote next to an American red wolf, I can barely tell the difference. And okay. I'm like trained in this. You know okay. what I yeah. mean? Like, it's very hard to tell. So we caught an animal on camera that was a very large coyote koi wolf dog you know what i mean it was something in right, that family right. and it didn't look like a normal coyote it certainly wasn't definitely definitively didn't a look wolf. like a normal it didn't look like the coyotes i see in my neighborhood right exactly and yeah. it was cool i mean i was stoked we got that video footage yeah. but yeah just snowshoeing around there you know that was we, cool as shit we had the tracking dog i can't remember his name anymore yeah, yeah that was cool that was German fun that was a cool shit it was a cool shoot we had a lot of fun up dude, there. dude i will say snow. just also the night Forrest put out a bunch of snares and caught some rabbit, like when we were up in the mountains actually camping. Yeah. yeah. We ate some fucking rabbit by the campfire. That was good. But the night where, and I think this did make it in the show, where you were just sitting by the campfire, and then you would just howl, and then we'd hear the return Howl call. back, yeah, that was cool. Just freezing cold, man, zero degrees, mm-hmm. snowing. That, uh, it was wonderful. Check this out. Is that this video we posted on Patreon? Is that what no, this No, that's no. different. That's so this else. was season one. This was Newfoundland. Yeah. You guys are just howling it up. You love howling, man. Yeah. You really I mean, do. it's one of the few animals that you can vocalize, and they'll talk back to you. I know. I you do it with my dog. and get yeah. an elk to talk back. You know, you can't call 
call an elephant or roar to a lion. Right. But you can <laughs> yeah. you can howl and a wolf coyote's gonna howl back. And now that's what is amazing. that? That's I've always found that pretty fascinating. I discovered that. Yeah, because they, they know that you're not part of their pack. pack. So what the fuck are they howling they back for? They think that like are they howling because it's another pack they think made a kill or something? They're like, K- yeah, K- good canines, job. Spe- not all canines, but specifically <laughs> wolves and coyotes do what's called a locator howl. Oh, okay. okay. And so what that is is it's basically just where are you? You know, am I going to challenge you? Am I coming into your habitat? You right. Know, am I not? You know, I, I I guess we don't really know what they're thinking, but it's a locator howl. Right. And that's oh, typically what you're getting back. So, so do- you you're howling. And that's like, hey, where are you? Yeah. And somebody's going back, I'm over here. Where <laughs> yeah. are you? And that's what the return howl is. So they might go, ooh, and that might be like, I'm over here. Or it yeah. might be like, oh, and then you're like, it's like, don't fuck with me, dog. Yeah, totally. And oh, I don't think we okay. really know the answer to that, regardless of what some people <laughs> sure. might say. Sure. But it is, you know, it's what we do know is it's for sure a locator howl to figure out where are each other, where, where are the rival is. packs, where are the different animals. <sighs> what what about yeah. when, like, my dog does it back with me? That's because I'm part of the pack with him? Yeah, I mean, you've co- co- you know, man has co-evolved with dog for thousands of years. and Yeah. It, it's does fucking, your four-inch long dog howl? Dude, that's he, hilarious. He definitely Your goldfish sized dog. He does, <laughs> but he also just gets like it, it's almost like he can't help it and it annoys him. He's like, like I how he has to respond. <laughs> yeah, to like you. and he like nervously is like, <laughs> and then like if I get it going in the right tone, it's like full bore, like. Arr! Oh, that's and funny. He's doing it with me, you know. That's funny. But like, it's very like nervous, and he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> he's still he fucking about the just howling? like, let's go, and he's in. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I'll, I'll send a video, or I'll post a uh, video. I couldn't get my dog to talk back to me. No way. Now, you have like the perfect wolf howl, dude. It's bonkers. Yeah, and well, my dog doesn't speak wolf. Then. Hundreds of hours working on it. <laughs> I actually. Yeah, hold on. Here it is. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! That is not a wolf. That's actually you. That's me. That's me in Newfoundland <laughs> from episode good. three. Thank you. All right. We haven't done this one. This is a special one near and dear to yep. my heart. We yep. have not done what the behind scenes of this. The pilot episode of Extinct oh. or Alive. Back oh. when they said, you can do a pilot, but not really, because we don't really think this is great yet. Right. Um, so we have this thing. Animal Planet had this thing called Monster Week, which was their answer to Shark Week. Right. Okay. And they this were is like, fun, actually. we could There's sort a of, lot of wedge, stories behind we could, this. we could, we can justify the expense of your crummy pilot, <laughs> <laughs> your existence, uh, yeah. if you do it for Monster Week. Right. Okay. So pick something sort of monsterish, and so we wanted to do thylacine. That was the obvious sort of obsession. And we, we kind of had a hard time with that because. I mean, I, at least I did, because I was like, it's not a monster. And sure. I don't, not you even know, Monster dangerous. Week was like fucking Bigfoots and, yeah. and Godzillas yeah. and I don't even know what. But, you know, sure. like, you know, I watched not, it. like, <laughs> yeah, I was like all this dangerous stuff. Right. And we were just like, it's it's not a, like it's ghoul. Like, the thing about thylacine is it's monstrous <laughs> looking. Right. Monstrous looking. Super weak Good jaw, man. though, even like not, yeah. not a terrifying no, not animal. Not terrifying, but but had that. Sort of appeal, yeah. yeah that cryptid. And I think the fact that it was extinct, right. they were like, it's right. sort of cryptid. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. got a very, uh, yeah, it's got a very interesting looking snout and face compared to other animals. Oh, in dude, its it's class. Cool. oh no, they're it's amazing the looking. There's no the question about animal. that. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, so yeah. Game. So sorry, Patrick. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it was just yeah, like yeah. they're like, yeah, do it, do it for Monster Week, and I was at that point was like, oh well. This sucks. We'll have yeah, a like, yeah, sure, we'll do right, it. Right, we'll still do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you want, yeah, you wanted to get that trip to the Galapagos, so you had to work we for like it. Like, we got to work. Close. Yeah. yeah. Tasmania, but close. They were so unsure. <laughs> no, I'm at, yeah, at the end of yeah. the day. They were so unsure about the show that they were like, Forrest needs a co host. Right. Which we we cast this woman, Marianne Ojota. Didn't they sort of force. You were more involved in that. I was. They wasn't. were. They liked her from something else she had done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were like, if, if Marianne's in it, then we can... Yeah, I think it was part of getting the pilot through. Right. Was that we involved Marianne. Right. Um, and so then off to Tasmania. You, you did a bunch of logistics, set it up. I didn't go in the field for this because I was working on something else and uh, hired this guy, David Carr... And you he did guys, a great job. Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone, awesome. everyone seemed to like him. Good guy. Now, guys, what, what was what was David's role? He was gonna just run the field shoot. He was Patrick in the field because oh, Patrick gotcha. was busy on something. Yeah, else. Right on. Yeah. So they get on a plane. Farewell. <laughs> See you guys later. Shooting the pilot. They go off. 
about 18 hours later, I get a phone call from David Carr after they've landed in Tasmania. He goes, hey, man, so here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. um, the whole area we're going to is on fire completely, like 100-foot tall flames. It's the biggest forest fire basically ever in the Tasmanian world. Tasmanian history, wow. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, so uh, I'm trying to figure it out. I think I have some solutions, but uh, everywhere Forrest wants to go is on fire. So <laughs> yeah, there's it's a no red chance. zone. Uh, he what wanted are, to pull I, the plug. Oh, really? He did. Yeah, he wanted oh, to pull the plug. He's like, I've never had to deal with this kind of thing. Like, this is, it's, no we, we should throw in the towel. Like, and I was there, like, straight into the you know, fire. The way for real. He, you just described it is probably after me being like, listen, Quite possibly, here's yeah. the map. Here's where the fire, you know what I'm like. Yeah, when I yeah, want to yeah, do something. Yeah. Like, what are you like, Forrest? Tell us. Incredibly, incredibly persistent. Uh, persistent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not very good at taking no for an answer. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting there with David Carr, you know, and at this point in time, you know, Patrick Patrick came up with the show. Yeah. So let's be very clear. It was Patrick's idea. I helped develop it and be like, yeah, I really want to do this. I am passionate about it. Sure. But I didn't yeah. understand TV. I didn't understand the dynamics of who does what and what does. So to me, I was just an employee. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I yeah. was, And I'm right. like, I can't fuck this At up. At that time, right. especially because it's a pilot. So you're it's a like, pilot. I, yeah, exactly. I don't it's, know it's, anything. It's I'm a, like, yeah. David Carr is my boss. Right. You know it's, what how, I mean? it's anytime anybody goes into any job, that's like right. how you are. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, in hindsight, it would have been very different, but... I was also so green around the gills. Right. I didn't know anything about TV. But anyway, so to me, David Carr is my boss. So here's this guy <laughs> who's like, all right, we're pulling the plug. Like, it's fucked. There's all these fires. And it was gnarly. Like, they were evacuating parts of, like, Hobart, which is the capital city. And, like, yeah. it was crazy. And I'm sitting there with this map being, like, my entire career of trying to motivate people to care about wildlife and conservation is right here. Yeah. Like, it's happening right now. And I can either talk this L.A. guy into, like, you know, <laughs> staying in Tasmania and risking his life so I can talk about animals. Right. And if I kind of talk him into that, we're out. Like, it's done. It's over. Like, right. I'm still, like I'm coming back. Yeah. And in hindsight, like, maybe I could have come and back. And you're I don't into this know, idea. But, but no, you want to make the shot? It would have gone tits up. Man. It would have gone tits up, If you guys sure. had, had bailed, it was tits up. A hundred percent. So anyway, I don't the mean... EOA would not have existed no. for sure. if this one decision and, and by the way, panned I don't out mean to And I don't mean to say that I did it or, no. or or to take away from Patrick, who I've been talking for like 10 minutes now. But my point was, I'm sitting there with a map with David Carr, and you know, you're looking on Google, you're updating the fires, and I'm like, this is the spot. Here's totally fine. Look, wind, wind's typically out of the south. Like, <laughs> this area's good. Yeah. yeah. You know? Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, no, so you guys went and did it, and then... Well, you, wait, wait, so so what happened? So you guys so, found a spot that you could go? Yeah, so let me explain, actually, and this was this was very, very much so biologically true, mm-hmm. but also genius, if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you do. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> so there are these huge fires going mm-hmm. on, right? I got a picture here if you want to pull it up. Pat. Yeah, there are these Some huge fires shit. going on in Tasmania. I mean, mm-hmm. absolutely nutso. Lots of stuff on and, fire here. Yeah, pull up that second pick, and I'll this explain one? something with that one. Yeah. And so as these fires burn, just like you're seeing in this picture, Peter, yeah, there are these walls of flames. But the topography is such that as a fire sweeps down an area, mm-hmm. when you have these natural valleys, all of the animals run down into these valleys. Right. Like sure. They're fleeing the fire. Right, right. So I turn to David Carr, who turns to Patrick, who turns to the network, yeah. and I say, look, this is an unbelievable opportunity. Mm-hmm. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, every single animal in Tasmania is going to be running away from the fire. Right. If we find a pinch point where the topography has two mountains on either side and it acts as a funnel, yeah. every animal that's up uphill of that yeah. is going to be funneled through this valley. I'm legit sold and like I, I no, know but it's that not, I mean of course yeah. animals it's, it's don't want to die in a fire any more than us as animals. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we knew these fires were going on and when the show came out and people don't know this, we edited it as though like that was the plan. Right. That was only the plan once we once the fires broke out. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. behind the scenes fucking Yeah, yeah info. but it's, it's good for people to know that. Yeah, but absolutely. It, it's not deceiving not because at all. that was the plan once we came up with it. Yeah, you know, but a lot anyway. of that stuff works that way. That's yeah. how the world works. Anyway, yeah, I found this area on a map. We do we do we talk about it in the show. We, I, yeah. if I remember correctly, yeah. and I'm like, here are these two mountain ridges. Mm-hmm. You know, they they're in a V shape. Right. Fires coming literally this way. Fu- it looked like an actual funnel. It literally was shaped like a funnel. Yeah. yeah. Fires coming this way. You know, down from down the funnel. Yep. And we're gonna camp right here at like the spout of the funnel. Yeah. And there will be every animal running away from the fire will come through this valley because they mm-hmm. won't go up the sides of the mountains. Yeah. And we'll be in the, the dead center of it. And if one of those animals is a thylacine, done. Yeah. Home run. Yeah. 
There, you went and did. Uh, so Chris Darnell was the DP on this. I love that guy. Yeah, you went and did an interview with someone like in a cabin or something at one point. Yeah, there was an old guy whose grandfather had a picture of a okay. thylacine that he had shot. Okay. And so the thylacine after it was supposed to be extinct. Correct. Like five years after, and this was yeah. legit. Like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. this is verified. This 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 guy was a sheep farmer. Okay. This thing was terrorizing his sheep. He yep. shot it. This animal basically walked like 30 feet from where he shot it and lay down because it was mortally wounded. Mm. Right. The guy walked over with his old school camera, took a picture of it. Okay. The thing sat there for like another day and a half and then died. Gotcha. Wow. And it was w- probably the last thylacine in Tasmania. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, Tarnell was, I remember because I was like, hey, how'd it go? You know, I've worked with this guy a lot, the, the DP, yeah. and I'd never worked with the, the, the guy who was running the field part, David. Right. And uh, he's like, yeah, it was good. He's like, yeah, man, I got one gripe. He's <laughs> like, so we went to this cabin to shoot this forest was going to meet with this guy. Yeah. He's like, we filmed for like an hour and a half. And he's like, my my arms were literally like shaking like there was an earthquake. Like I, I was about to, I couldn't hold the camera anymore. Uh huh. He's like. And they're just still talking, and they're still talking, and they're still talking. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck else they could talk about at right. this point. <laughs> He's like, an hour later, I was just like, my my arms were so full of lactic acid that I just was like, I got a cut. Yeah. He's like, I walk outside, <laughs> and David's sitting outside, like, looking at his email or, like, texting or something. Yeah. And he's like... Were you going to call a cut? And Dave was like, oh, I thought you cut like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> no. I didn't know about like, Dude, that. what the fuck? We've uh, been filming for three hours. I had no idea. Oh, and my yeah, God. I didn't way, know like, any of that. If that was season, even midway through season one or two, probably wow. after 30 minutes, you would have been like, I'm done. You were probably waiting for David to call a of cut Of course, because well. I was waiting for the boss to tell me what to do at yeah, that yeah, point yeah. in time. You know what I mean? That's... And so I was just doing the best of my ability until someone else <laughs> right. told me to stop. Favorite yeah, moment. Enough. What was your favorite moment from that shoot? So my favorite moment from that shoot um, is <laughs> is <laughs> I was so right, and, and, and <laughs> I'll explain why. I, I'm not saying it's a favorite arrogant. moment of his entire no, life. No, listen, listen. I'll explain it because the first night we went camping, so we got out there, and it was quite a trek to get out there. And we had Nick Mooney, this famous uh, biologist, who's yeah, the, you know who he is now, yeah. the guy who debunked the Neil Waters. Exactly. Right. We had yeah. Nick Mooney with us, and the, and this woman Marianne Ohoda with us. And we went out there, and this was all based on my theory of the fires and everything, and my understanding of wildlife and habitat and everything. And we set up tents, and it's cool. You know, there's a wallaby over there and a wombat in the distance and whatever. And the first night, I grabbed Chris Darnell, that DP, and I was like, come on, we're going to go for a walk. And we walked down the valley where we were and, like, up onto, like, a little hill, you know, that overlooked the valley. And I lifted up my thermal, like, FLIR binoculars. Mm -hmm. Dude, it looked like the African Serengeti. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was just... I'm, look, I'm getting goosebumps reliving yeah, it yeah, because yeah. we were in Tasmania, which right. doesn't is not the African Serengeti. Like, yeah. there's not thousands of animals. And I looked up with these binoculars, and as far as the eye could see was wallabies and wombats and quolls and all of these Australian animals that are hard to find mm-hmm. sitting in the valley mm-hmm. because they had come down pushed by the fire. Right. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this is ins- Like, it was literally like being... Just it eyes totally validated. Oh, you had the flare. So you had the flare. So, you had, I had the yeah, flare. so I'm looking at it through right. thermal, and it was like being in the Serengeti migration mm-hmm. of Australian animals, which is like something that nobody's ever seen because yeah, right. this is only situational due to the fire and the topography. And it wasn't that I was right. I didn't care about that. It was that I was seeing every animal that Tasmania had to offer in like one frame of binoculars. Which would never happen. Which would never happen. It's like going to the Amazon and having a jaguar here and an anaconda there and a river dolphin there and and seeing them all in the same look. You know what I mean? It just doesn't happen. Right. Or being in North America and seeing a bison and a wolf and a bear all hanging out together. You know, it just doesn't happen. So it was so cool to look out and see that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're smelling smoke and you're looking at fire up on the hills, but to look out and see this this megafaunal migration of Australian, of weird ass Marseille Supials, yeah, and being like, well, maybe somewhere in those, you know, ten thousand animals that I'm looking at, one could be a thousand. It was like, it was one of the coolest moments of wildlife I've ever had because I've yeah. never seen such an abundance of marsupials before. Well, and it was just, I mean, it's the very, you know, from from your perspective, you're new to TV. And this is the very first thing you're doing, and you're having this first amazing thing, first experience. Night. Yeah, you know, oh, wow. that's that's pretty yeah. crazy. 
Yeah. yeah. And was, then you I were like, that. Yeah, that was I got to get this fucking show sold. It's got to happen. And I, I honestly, at no point, I think I wrote this in the book. I never thought like I have to get the show sold. I just thought I got to show this to people. Right. Like, this is so yeah. important for people to see these animals. And that, that's like all my mentality ever was. Yeah. And then I, Patrick taught me how to produce and I learned how to do stuff and I learned how to tell a story and I learned, you know, yeah. all the things that come with TV. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, literally the only thing in my mind was like, I need to show people this. That was it. Like yeah. I didn't have another thought. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fucking amazing, man. Honestly. And you've had many, so many more experiences Go to the Patreon to hear about them all <laughs> that we've talked about just over the course of recording those bonus pods, man. There's and, a, sorry, yeah. no, no, go no, ahead. that's go it. Ahead. That's it. I was gonna go say there's it. another favorite moment that just crossed my mind. Okay, do, do you know what I'm gonna talk about? You might remember so. it. It didn't make the cut, and actually, I was oh, upset. The sheep, the sheep, dude. That Explain was it. my favorite. Explain well, it. It's well, so good, dude. So I sent the, the you know we usually like the the first cut will be like 20 minutes long, mm -hmm. right of a show, right, and then you go okay we got to cut 20 minutes yeah. out of this show. Yeah, 20, minutes, 20 over, minutes over, not 20 yeah. minutes long. Right? So yeah, yeah we, we'll we'll look at it and go all right, and then we'll kind of share it around and decide what do we cut. And uh, <laughs> there was dude Eric who was our other partner and I were laughing so goddamn hard at this one. I have scene. this clip. I'll say this should go on the page. It is yeah. fucking hilarious, dude. So yeah. dude, let me set something up yeah, real yeah, quick. Go for it. So the same cabin. <laughs> That uh, Patrick was just talking about, where Chris Darnell's arms were shaking. Yeah. yeah, that guy was a sheep farmer, as his his father and his father before him had been, and that's yep. why we were talking to him, right? And he tells us this whole story of how the sheep would bleat this panic call, and his granddad came down, shot the thousand, blah blah. So my logic, very simple: get a sheep distress call, Look, play it, see if a thousand comes in. If it's it's a huge part of the reason the thylacines extinct is because they were eating sheep. Correct. And I, they were bountied, and they love sheep. It's delicious, apparently. It's great. A lot of, like, uh, so many out-of-the-box things just with, like, the, you know, the whole thing of selling them on the idea, what we just talked about, and now, like, this would never occur to, uh, like, an average person to, to get a sheep to distress do the, call. Like a, street, a sheep distress call to get him to come. Right. So now I'm excited to hear. Okay. What so happened. yeah, I want Patrick to tell a story, and then there might be one more thing that I tell. Oh, so I just look at the first cut, and I'm I literally was like crying laughing because <laughs> Forrest is like, I need to get a sh I want to record a sheep distress call so that I can put these field speakers out and broadcast it and see if a thylacine would come into this animal that it loves to eat. Yeah. Right. Great. Good setup. Forrest walks into, I, I wouldn't even describe it as a pen. It's just a gigantic a field. field. You know, like a field where sheep graze. You know, yeah. you see him driving up the Highway 5 or whatever. There's, you know, it's like 20 acre yeah. field and there's like a flock yeah. of sheep in it. Yeah. He he's like, so I, what I need to do is go get the sheep. I need to catch a sheep. <laughs> right. And I tell this to David Carr, by the way, <laughs> and, uh, and the farmer... And David Carr, you know, the same kind of thing that he was just texting his emails, looking at his phone or whatever. He's like, yeah, you're not going to you're not going to catch one. Yeah. You know, he like tells me I'm not going to do it. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to try. And, and he literally was like, well, just take a camera with you. Like he wanted me to do it myself. I'm like, I can't. Right. And he's yeah. like, all right, well, whatever. And I turned to Chris, idea. who's a good buddy now. And I'm like, Chris, yeah. would you film this? He's like, of course, man. Yeah. He comes with. Yeah. Me. So Forrest sees a sheep. Hops the fence. Yeah. yeah hops the fence. <laughs> sees a sheep. Takes off running after it. Of course. Sheep's not super thrilled about that no. idea. <laughs> they run real fast. Yeah. yeah. They have four legs. Much they're, faster than me. They're pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. No bullshit. <laughs> there is like 45 minutes of footage of this, of Forrest <laughs> chasing this sheep around and <laughs> just gunning it, gunning it time after time, and the sheep keeps getting away. And for it gets close a couple times. He's diving. Yeah. Almost gets it. Doesn't get it. And I'm just watching. So it's cut down to like a three minute scene. I'm like, this is fucking nonsense. What the fuck? Forrest <laughs> is purple in the face <laughs> and he's just not giving up on catching the sheep. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. there's, I don't see another sheep anywhere in any shot. Right. <laughs> it's a massive field. And so he's just going and going and you can see that he's getting tired, but the sheep's getting tired. Right. Yeah. That was and just key. eventually guns it one more time, dives on it. Didn't hurt the sheep. No, gets the nice sheep. tackle. Nice yeah. good tackle. tackle. Form tackles them rugby style. Yeah, and gets the sheep down. Sheep immediately <laughs> starts doing the distress <laughs> call. <laughs> Busts out his recorder. His face is literally blue. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "So that's a, what I'm doing?" <laughs> and records the sheep distress call. Gets it. Actually used it. Yeah, used obviously it. Didn't, didn't bring work. a thylacine yeah. in. Um, and so that whole thread got cut. But it's like. It was Eric's favorite part of the whole show. It was my favorite part, too. Yeah, like when I told show. him, I was like, we just, 
It's one of the things that we just had to cut. Yeah. He's I just thought it was like, a network no. call. They're like, oh, it's. it's oh, look. that's I what it was. was. I thought You're they right. were like, it looks cruel or whatever. You're and I was right. Like, oh. yeah. They thought it looks like you were being mean to the sheep. Right. That's right. Yeah, because Eric was like, dude, it is. This is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's a guy tackling a sheep <laughs> in a field. I mean, it's not. Yeah, dude, we'll post it. We'll post, we'll that, post that. Yeah, yeah it's really also, really funny. It, it's also uh, what now makes me think that I actually might not be able to kick Forrest's ass. Because he could he definitely out- wear you down. Yeah, he'd wear me he down that's for sure. That's my move, dude. Yeah. That's, that's how I got married. Yeah. yeah. I'll just yeah. wear him down. You yeah. are a fucking <laughs> caveman. <laughs> oh, man. I hope we have a jingle. Because it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. I think I know what time it is. Do you know what time it is? I like time. it. Yeah, I like it. For what? The battle. <laughs> Battle Royale. <laughs> Woo! Battle Royale! Yeah! God damn it. It's about time, it guys. Is. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's right. go. I'm excited. I think I know who submitted this one. Okay. I think it was Wild Times Willie. Yeah, WT. <laughs> what makes you think that? Come well, on. Hot. Wild Times Willie is... Now six months into his cross country drive from Doesn't Brooklyn up. Yeah. to I think uh, he's gone back and forth, Colorado. Uh, here it is. I can I just before we get into it, if yeah. you don't know what the Battle Royale is, let's show these fucking pictures we've been talking about. Oh, God, oh that's yes. a good call. That's <laughs> a oh, good yeah. call. So last week, podcast sixty six, we had Nick Mancuso on. Yep. It yes. was a pretty epic battle royale. I asked people explicitly, someone please make these animals. Right. Yep. And so the battle royale concept last week was make the best animal to battle that fits in your overhead luggage. It basically. fits in your carry-on. Yeah, yeah. Peter's so, did not fit in any. Mine carry-on. is amazing. Yeah. It clearly world. fits. And you so yeah, p- yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, this is. I can I frame this? It's so mad. We got legit. Who made we need this? to fucking hang this in the in in here, man. Of course. Yeah. Who made this? So this is Doctor Terminator from uh, Terminator. What did I, what did <laughs> I say? Doctor Terminator. Uh, Dr. Terraminator okay. on Discord. Okay, so go back to it. Yeah. So this is incredible. So for a quick recap, and I'm just remembering this by looking at it, Nick Mancuso, professional race car driver, <laughs> <laughs> his animal was a Hawksbill sea turtle on the legs of a basilisk lizard with the body of, was it a Tenric? Uh, was Porcupine, it a Tenric? Hedgehog, something Por- like that. It was a Tenric. It was a Tenric, it was a Tenric. yeah. yeah. Uh, Patrick's lower left, the lower left. Yep. 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 Is it had the body and and protective armor of a turtle, box turtle. Yep. The head of a Tasmanian devil. That's correct. And the legs of an orang. Uh, no, a spider. Spider monkey. monkey that's yeah. right. The yeah. appendages of a it's spider climb, monkey. Man. Yeah. No, that one's honestly looking at this picture. That's that's, that's pretty f- fucking dope, dude. Oh my god, they're it all is. so dope. Um, Mine, which I failed royally on, <laughs> it was so wow, good. In my look at mind. this! Look at this finger right here, man. It's terrifying. So in my this head, I was gonna give it venom. <laughs> it was just gonna be a venom concoction. Yeah. And so I started strong with the head of a taipan, and then I went to the body of a platypus. But I Nick called me he out. Up, yeah. yeah. He and he's like, "Well, up. you just said the body. You didn't say the appendages. And the appendages are where the venom is." So yeah. I ended up with a <laughs> fluffy marshmallow body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. meat pillow. And, and yeah, it's a meat pillow. And the uh, the arms and legs of an eye eye because I just wanted to go creepy. Yep, right it's here. A good, Long it's, finger. It's good. good. I mean, the drawing's fantastic. And then what's Retef's abomination that would abomination never, would never fit? Are into a you carry-on? kidding me? It's just never. the same exact nope. size as all the others. Maybe a little smaller. Retef, no according to this drawing, had the head of Wolverine. Uh, a Wolverine. Mm-hmm. On the body of a screech owl, Bar- barn owl, barn owl, <laughs> with the leg or legs still unclear. Two legs yes, in this unclear, version unclear. of um, an emu. Uh, no, cassowary. Not a cassowary. cassowary. Right, That's yeah. right. So yeah, crazy critters. They all get together. They fight. But Patrick asked the Brosners, "Would you please create these?" I think if, we got more. Too. Yeah, we got some yeah, more. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna bring them up right now. Uh, so we have these 3D renditions. Here. Oh, Antonio made these. Yeah. Urig Wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Urig Wild. On yeah. Instagram, yeah. Urig Wild. Urig Wild. There's on your IG. platypus. Fucking <laughs> it's a ridiculous. mess. I mean, at least it's kind of jacked, you know, but it's they a mess. That. Look yeah. at the eye eye finger there. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It's, I mean, they're cool looking. Peter's in this one is. Yeah, I, this is closer to what it would be. Way too big this for is, a carry on. Yeah, if, it's it, nine feet tall. This would go extinct just like the Never. dodo bird. There's did, a lot of neckage. It looks like a dodo bird. Look at the amount of neckage going on yeah, that's here. A monstrosity. I mean, great yeah. effort, though. Great effort. Oh, as far as Next. A, Yeah, incredible. Next, there's my. There's winner. yours. Yeah. Yours scares me. 
I'll be honest. It's that it's that spider monkey it's the appendage spider monkey thing. monkey arm with the with the tur- turtle shell. Get out it's of here! Yeah, it's, it's armored nice. and nimble. Bone nice rendition. Jaw, and then what did Nick? And then have? what do we got for the last one here? That's that's now, a mess. It's a no, mess. that's yeah. the I mean, winner. The art's great, but look, what, are you, what are you? No, doing the art's with amazing. It? Yeah, well, that man, thing's the winner, man. That thing comes out of your idiot. luggage. You know nothing <laughs> the, with a turtle head. Pull up uh, Will Pascarooks as well. Yeah, let's see what Will All drew right, up. Well, I, anyway, well. I love this. So, Brosters, when you when you oh my god, this is amazing. That's <laughs> there's, mine. There's your fucking it's what so a disaster. Good. It's a uh, beautiful disaster. Yeah. It's no good. It's not. Love but it. so for this week, thank you guys, everyone. So thank you that. so much, guys. Awesome. They love the Burial. artwork. They're, we're putting them up in here, by the way. Oh, That's a thing. No. Yes. Zero question. Yeah. Yes. All right. So here's the deal. Will moved from Brooklyn. Yep. To Boulder. So yep. seven months ago. He was like, I want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's still moving. Uh, <laughs> he's like, you know, man, Brooklyn's just uh, it's not for me anymore. Too many hipsters. <laughs> right. Yep. So this is gonna be a snake draft. We're gonna draft the head, body, what's that, and appendages. Yeah. You have to create a new critter. Okay. You're going to release 500 of these. <laughs> okay. Into Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Never been, but I, I, I get the idea. <laughs> the goal is to drive out all the hipsters. Okay. Are there more so than, like, say, Hollywood or San Francisco or Portland or Oregon? I would say Brooklyn is, like, the, maybe number one. Okay. Based on where I've been. It's like the king of Staten Island kind of yeah. status. Gotcha. So you okay. got 500 of these. Here's the problem. They're, because we've sort of created them in a lab, they're sterile. Okay. Oh, no. So you can never get any more. Oh, no. This is it. Yeah. Okay. So you've okay. got to release them into Williamsburg, okay. and this is going to drive out all the hipsters okay. so that that area can be sort of just like reclaimed either by the hardy, tough people. Sure. Or like just normal people. sort of the parks and stuff can be reclaimed by nature. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Head, body, legs. <laughs> it's going to drive all the hipsters from Williamsburg, the hipster haven. <laughs> okay. If you live in Williamsburg, don't stop listening. We okay. love you. But do stop being a hipster. Cause yeah. Ugh. It's it's rough. Yeah. So anyway, I'll go first this time. Okay. Because I have such a good idea that I must have this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take... Curious what your angle is for this, by yeah, the way. I'm yeah, I'm going to take the body. I'm going to start with my body of a skunk. I want this animal to be a problem, a pest. I have a lot of skunks where I live in the Valley of Los Angeles. There are fuck every goddamn night I'm smelling a skunk spray. There okay. Are, yeah. I see them too all the fucking okay. time. Okay. You got to have a something that makes it, you don't want it just to be dangerous. It's got to be a nuisance. Yeah. And so I'm sure. taking the body of a skunk with the scent glands so that it's constantly creating these fart clouds uh, <laughs> that's going to just drive everyone crazy. Absolutely. That's okay. how I'm starting. Okay. I like that. Right. Peter, why don't you go next oh, well, tonight? Up. Okay. You always go. You, you always goes third to mess up the snake draft. He, so. yeah. he fucks it up on his third uh, pick every single time. It's easy. This yeah. one, I get three picks right off the bat and I'm done. So yeah. as the second picker. That's correct. So um, I, I immediately started Googling stuff hipsters hate. That's, uh, that's literally what I'm so Googling I right could, now. There's a book, by the way. Yeah, I don't know, I know if you found that on Amazon. I did. It was I, the first found, thing that came yeah. up. But I was trying to come think out of the box and just like think of something that they would hate that's an urban animal. And, you know, I, I, I don't know what it is. But I know that they hate anything that isn't unique or right. cool or different. I like yeah, how you're good. saying these words, by the way. Like yeah. I just like the unique. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's nice. So my my animal is is going to have the body of your standard pigeon because it's very common. They will hate. It's very the mainstream. Pigeon. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. mainstream. It's, it's too mainstream. It's very mainstream. And That's a good. Call. It's not yes. like going yeah. to the record store to get the uh, no. Harold and Maude uh, LP. <laughs> no, that's very hipsterish. <laughs> yeah, but um, but it's it's common and yet it's a very good base because it flies. And more to build on. M- more to build on while you guys go. I'll very throw. nice. Very good nice. Pick, good okay. Pick. I, I'm Common taking a pigeon. pretty unique approach here. So I'm going to start very unusual with okay. the appendages. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Very simple. It's very clean. Makes uh-huh. a lot of sense. Keep in mind, both the things you guys have said so far, pigeon being very average <laughs> and body of a skunk being very repulsive, <laughs> those are going to drive away... A lot of people. Yep. I'm trying to target hipsters here. Right. Okay, so that's important. Okay. So I'm going to start with the appendages. Take the simple appendages of a northern lobster. 
Because I want a lobster to come up, cut suspenders. If it Ooh. sees a pair of suspenders, just walks up, just it'll come snap. up. Yeah, because they do tend to wear suspenders all in most suspenders. days of the week. Then their pants are around their ankles. <laughs> they can only su- sustain that for their reputation twice at most. And they're moving. Yeah, right. you know. Okay. That's so smart. Okay. It's okay. got it's got the arms of a lobster. Got it. You know, just just for cutting suspenders here. Like it. Now like the it. second thing that I know well about the breed of hipster, <laughs> they're very self-important. Okay. Zero question. Right. Like they, they yeah, take it's themselves. It's a hallmark. It's Absolutely. a hallmark. They take themselves yeah. very seriously. And, and arguably the most important thing to them, along the lines of what we we're saying a minute ago, is their music. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, Literally it's, the number one biggest thing. Right. And uh, it's got to not be mainstream. It's got to be really weird. Hard to <laughs> yeah, listen like, to. Have you heard of the new rapper Slinky Jim? Yeah. And you're, you're like, like, I haven't. And they're like, oh. Uh, well, you're not cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So. With my suspender cutting lobster body, <laughs> I have the head and throat of a howler monkey. Oh, god damn okay. it. You get I where quit. I'm going. I get by. Yeah, so what you're doing there, you've added throat, I'll give it to you. That's fair. Is that on. is that just so that they're really loud? It's so they're loud, but most importantly, these are train critters, correct? Isn't this you can how train we it. usually you can train play? It up. Yeah. So every time it hears something that's not on the billboard charts, yeah. Just <laughs> You know, it's just gonna. God, uh, just, I don't even see, on. you want to move right now. I do. Yeah, because the howler monkey is just gonna go. It's just gonna go nuts on this bad mm. music. And if right. a hipster can't hear his music and he's got no suspenders, <laughs> it's not a good situation. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the suspenders <laughs> is a good thing to target. Okay, okay. I, I have a very specific idea of how I'm gonna drive them out. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot through smell. So yeah, I've yeah, got the scent glands so of a skunk. That. I'm going to take the head of a common golden retriever. Okay. Now, here's why. Of all mammals in the animal kingdom, mm-hmm. the domestic dog is the most prone to halitosis caused by bacteria. Okay. Interesting <laughs> angle. Particularly the golden retriever. So my, do- my animal can spray skunk smell mm-hmm. out of its ass. While simultaneously breathing, if you smell halitosis breath, it really gets on you. It's yeah, it's, it's pretty almost offensive. like you can see it coming yeah, through the air. The halitosis it's is thick. a myth, mate. But okay, <laughs> it's not. It's bacteria that dogs get in the mouth, particularly the golden retriever. <laughs> okay, but Brooklyn's a very vertical city. Okay, mm. very very tall. Yep. I need my animal to be able to get everyone, not just people on the ground floor, or people right. that are uh, you know at the park. Right. So yeah. I need to be able to climb straight up vertical surfaces. Glass, whatever. I'm going to take a Jackson's chameleon. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. They can climb the buildings, right? So I've got the appendages of the Jackson's chameleon. Yeah. Okay. It's got the fart cloud of a skunk mm-hmm. and the horrible halitosis of your common golden retriever. <laughs> so then, to be clear, it's breathing the, in all windows. So the yep. body of a chameleon in general. No, the appendages. So where's your body right now? Skunk, skunk body. I'm skunk, sorry. Skunk. I'm sorry. Yeah, Jackson's yeah, yeah, chameleon yeah. appendages. Yeah. Yep. Climb. Okay. You're on the gotcha. 15th story. Doesn't matter. It's uh, just yeah. You're just stinking them out. Yeah. Yeah. You're stinking, stinking them out. out. It's a smell yeah. bomb. Stinking yeah. them out. I get it. Hipsters I like can't it. deal with bad smells. I mean, you're only you're only attacking you're only attacking on one vertical, which I don't agree with. I think uh, Forrest is his animal smarter. Cool. So well, far, but you can vote, and it'll count for one vote. And, and, uh, uh, <laughs> quiet over there. This is my time. Quiet. Over sure. There. Go ahead and add herpes to your. Nope. No <laughs> herpes They're because they, this animal cannot reproduce. There's only ever going to be 500. Herpes ability would need to be re- reproduced and destroy the entire population. So the let's go. I love it. I'm loving the this one. Hustle. My my animal is going to have the uh, face and head of a hagfish, and I'll tell you why. Ah. Mm. So I'll tell a good you why. Pick. It doesn't really matter. Now, you don't even explain no, it. It's, it's just a good yeah, pick. Yeah. I will it's tell you pick. why. Hipsters really. I liked it. I caught you googling. I caught him Googling nastiest animals, everybody. Yeah, I'm sure you I, I have skunk. control over his screen. I'm sure you didn't get seen, skunk care. I've <laughs> seen that you Googled the 15 nastiest animals. Yeah, you but are still, a simpleton. But man. listen, it, a, it's, no, listen, it's not a simpleton. Pigeon body, hagfish head. Because hipsters really enjoy, in addition to music and not being dirty and gross, 
They're coffee. They're always at coffee shops That's drinking true. liquid no, teas, green tea, matcha. But what does that have to do with that? Well, yes. Well, most well, most my tea friend, is in liquid form. I, I, so I am about call. to shut your mouth. <laughs> uh-huh. I am about to school the broologist here. Never. Did you know that just a small portion of the mucus from a hagfish can turn a glass of water into a glass of snot like substance? And they produce 17 pints. Of this mucus and expel yeah. it very easily. We, we did know this. There's a famous picture, if you could pull it up, of a car, car crash. crash. I'm busy thinking. That was, <laughs> uh, they were transporting hagfish because they used the mucus You, you had products. no idea that just a small portion of it could turn their entire uh, cup of coffee honest, into a snot-like substance. I didn't know that you could turn their coffee into snot. I That's didn't right. know that. That's very good. This is a fact from 15 of the world's nastiest animals. You're yelling dot org. very loud. <laughs> dot edu. Yeah. Okay. I'm All in right. the middle. I, that's so you've my rounded pick. it out. By yeah. the way, I also said good pick. I didn't ground it. I rounded it out. Thank you. Fucking idiot. All right. Who's next? <laughs> You're still next. Oh, wait. Was I last? I thought I was in the middle. He's in the middle. Oh! oh this is the second time I he fucked it up. up. Yeah, Where's the shit up. talking? Okay, go for From it. From you! Your face is getting very red, sir. <laughs> um, okay. So my, my creature has the arms of a lobster for snipping suspenders. The holler monkey's voice to scream anytime there's hipster music going off. Now, what is, what is the opposite of a hipster? Probably like a meathead. A meathead. Yeah. You got it. You nailed it. Someone who's jacked in good shape. Yeah. I'm picking the red kangaroo. You know that shredded, that yoked kangaroo? Yeah, they don't don't like that. They They hate meatheads. They're not not dealing with good fitness. No. They They, they hate it and they're intimidated by it. By the way, that could just be your only animal and they'd clear out the whole city. That's what I mean. It's It's bouncing around. It's in too good a shape for a hipster to deal with. Like, it's got abs. It's got So you've got the body of the kangaroo that's got these lobster claws. And then what's the head? Oh, a howler monkey? That sounds terribly annoying. It's, it's awesome. And there's 500 of them. It is It is annoying, hipster or not, but it's very targeted because it's trained to only howl during bad music. Yeah, I'll give you it credit only, for that. It only snips at suspenders, nothing else. <laughs> right. You know, uh, you know what? I'm going to change that. I'm going to change it. It only snips at suspenders and curly mustaches. It can snip that off. Yeah, it can take <laughs> yeah. that mustache right off. Yeah, so, snipping. You know, so you're just going to have essentially just a bunch of naked hipsters with good mustaches running around. Well, maybe. Normal. But then they're just normal <laughs> yeah, people at that normal. point. You know what I mean? You, you lose the suspenders true. and mustache. Oh, my God. You can't play yeah, the music. You just got he, a normal guy. Yeah, you're he turning Brooklyn to... into a Tom Selleck <laughs> toga party. So, <laughs> which is... I win. All right. You're up. My final appendage, uh, or my final pick for this is appendages. And uh, you know what hipsters hate more than their coffee being turned into snot? He's, he's making an extra pick. He's already picked three. No, what? he's got pigeon and hagfish. That's it? That's you it. guys are both fucking idiots. They don't no, know how to I agreed with you. I'm switch, on your team right now. right now. I'm on your team. They don't know how bad. Let's go. Let's works. go. Appendages of. Appendages Thank of, you. because they have two of these, and hipsters, if they hate anything. They hate blood. They don't want to see their own blood. They're, they get very squeamish. This is a little okay. bit. He's, he's, he's bending the narrative to fit his pick. They don't like blood. Have okay. you ever met a hipster? You dated one for many years. Okay. <laughs> so they have... <laughs> they are going to have the appendages of a What's, leech. A is, leech. Hey, what is an appendage? Also, leeches Stop don't have a They do. They have two suckers, one on the front, one on the uh, back. I guess that's and true. And this I will be really a flying a leech. He did it again. A flying leech hagfish mucus monster. Forrest, it he, sucks he did because it you're again. so good. It you does come suck. In so They're strong, leeches. Fuck off. Your third no, pick. he did it to himself again. Yeah, it's brutal. That's, that's awful. Well, at least I know how a battle royale works, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> that's true. No, I, that's, I that up. is... I'm sorry, Brosners, because Ritep has come twice now so close. where he, his first two picks, what he was winning. What do you your dog besides your own dick? <laughs> and, and he just does this. He's his own worst enemy. Yeah. I can't say it enough. Yeah. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Patrick's apologizing to the camera. Yeah. All right, so just to recap, <laughs> listen, Brosners, give us a weigh in. Comment in the YouTube. By the way, you guys comment every week, and we love it. Like, it's oh, important yeah. to yeah. us. We love getting Read the comments. All. Here's who won and why. Like, I love it when someone goes on YouTube and explains it. Well, look, like, P- yeah. P- Peter actually won because the truth is, you know, hipsters do need their coffee and they will not <laughs> drink it. Hipsters do hate blood. They don't yeah, like blood. <laughs> they don't like snack coffee. I love it. I love when they do they that. They don't like so, common to animals. Recap, Patrick's Forest critter. Room. No, has the body of a lost. skunk. So did Pat. You know, and, and it's smelly. It's yeah. got the head of a golden retriever with, with mush mouth. You know, it's just <laughs> some stinky halitosis some going switch on. switch in there, mate. Come on. And, and it can go Sorry. anywhere because it's got the appendages of a Jackson chameleon. So it's just hunting down hipsters, no, up the throwing building. smell at them in the building, it's in the vent, outdoors, inside. doesn't matter. You don't want to no. deal with it. Okay. No. Peter's critter has the body of a common pigeon. 
very standard. It's a very it's they like hate it, common it's so things. mainstream. It's, common. it's, very, it's a mainstream they like critter to be unique uh, in the body. Yep. It's got the head of a hagfish that's just going around, and I guess spitting in coffee and tea. Yeah, it's going into coffee yeah. shop. Can produce yeah. seventeen pints. No, no, I it's, get it. I'm dropping just drops I'm, of it, which will turn the whole cup to no, mucus. No, it's good. I like it. Like I'm not. Mucus. I'm not against it. And apparently, hipsters hate blood, so it has the appendages of a leech. Two suckers. Suckers. One mm. on the front just a body portion, not, one yeah. on the back. Not really an yeah. appendage, but okay. it, it's something. Suckers are an appendage. Look it up, mate. My critter <laughs> uh, has the absolute yoked body of the red kangaroo, those big muscly ones that you see yeah. in Australia. Yeah. Hipsters hate people in good shape. They hate, hate. neat heads. They like to be sickly and cough a lot. Yeah. yeah. Patrick literally yeah. identified it straight away. Yeah. It was perfect. He set me up for my critter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the body of the jack kangaroo. Uh, the arms of a lobster. So any suspenders, twirly mustaches, just snip, <laughs> gone, turning the hipsters right into yeah. normal people. I'm going to snip yo fucking... Old Harold and Maude records, just uh, yeah, psh, gone. Yeah. Cut them up. And just in case they're playing some weird music nobody's ever heard of, you got a howler monkey just coming in, screeching in your ears. Please don't make that noise. Please. I won't yeah, do you that can't anymore. listen to whatever, you know, Slinky Jim or Dinky You can't listen to your music. <laughs> yeah. you, you can't grow a nice mustache that you twirl with wax. Yeah. You can't use suspenders to hold up your pants or for aesthetics. I mean, no. I mean, you just you just bought the new limited release LP of Shrimperton's new album. Shrimperton, yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's cutting it into pieces. Oh, it's a mess. Yeah. Fragments. Listen, Most, I, I guess I'm, no, calling it's a, I'm calling an audible. I disregard my entire animal. I'm just gonna send Pat in. He'll clear the <laughs> entire fucking town out. He's yeah, so bad breath. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sharp you know, nose. Body of a jack kangaroo. Yeah, he wishes. Sharp, hipsters yeah. hate sharp nose. noses. That, <laughs> it's terrible. It's so terrible. You poke holes in their coffee cups. Uh, they lose Peter, all the liquid. Look, it's because of the patrons it's because of the people mm-hmm. listening to this podcast and, and on the, the other clickers. platform that we yeah. have this incredible studio yep i mean i love this place i love sitting here with you guys it's fucking joy don't forget it, the merch buyers good. oh yeah that's true and the merch buyers people. but you know what he's Bros drunk nurse. he's drunk hey i'm not drunk drunk guy tell them where they can like sign up and get more because we do this twice a week not just once well we yeah. release two a week well and you can month, get those eight for a month, month eight a month <laughs> on the patron explain I'm the patron. thing please yeah, go to the Patreon. It is just patreon.com forward slash the forward, forward slash wild times pod, right? Fuck, God damn it. The wild times podcast.com forward slash info for all of the links so I don't have to say them. I'm a little tipsy. I definitely won Battle Royale, and I love you, and I hate you too. Let's go eat some pizza made in Forest's Stone Fire Oven. Let's do it. Uh, I think we should. We, we will. Oh, we're still recording. Yeah. And good night. I'm excited about it. What kind of toppings are we talking about? Dude, it's make your own. You can do pepperoni. We can make a nice margarita. Ooh. I'm going to make you a mushroom pizza. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, you got some porcinis? What do you feed your dog besides your own dick? Good night, everybody.